Dominic Lawton can be wild. Welcome to the Bad Movie Cult. This week, we're heading back to Van Damme country. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, although he's not from Belgium in this one. He's from Russia. Ruskia. Yes, yes. Ivan the Russian. It's the 1986 Corey Yoon film, No Retreat, No Surrender. Ladies and gentlemen, Eastern Europe's most feared martial artist, Ivan Krasinski! Jason Stilwell wanted to be a champion. But he's having a tough time at school. Look, no excuses here, mister. Let's see what you're made of. Fight! And a tougher time at life. Stay out of the way, punk. She's mine. But Jason has a dream. Someday I'm going to be just like him. He needs a little help. And a lot of guidance. Now your training begins. He's just found the best. Set the images all in your head. The result is power. Now, Jason's getting serious. Getting fast. <laughs> power. And getting competitive. He wanted to be a champion. You're good. I get better. But he never expected to be a hero. No retreat, no surrender. Okay, so this stars Kurt McKinney as Jason Stilwell. Yeah, uh, he looks a little bit like Rob Lowe, I thought, in this. Uh, like a very young Rob Lowe. Yeah. Not, not an old Rob Lowe, obviously. No, He's supposed to be a teenager. Yeah. <laughs> Fifty year old. This can some, some Peter Bark. <laughs> this continues the trope of casting twenty year old as teenagers. Work for me. We've also got Tomith uh not Timothy. Timothy D. <laughs> Baker as Tom Stillwell. Thomas Thomas the Hour. Thomas the Man. <laughs> <laughs> We've got JW Fails as RJ. Yeah, Fails. <laughs> <laughs> not right, Jesus. Yeah. Ron Ponnell as Ian Whirlwind Riley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope you've looked him up because I can't believe he's an actor. <laughs> uh, Tay John Kim as Bruce Lee. Yeah. And of course, John Claude Van Damme as Ivan the Russian Krasinski. Boo! <laughs> this has an IMDb rating of 5.6 out of 10. That is unbelievable. unbelievably you know, you know been, generous. Do you know who's voting that? People like, Van Damme. people like me, who used to watch it when they were a kid, probably hasn't seen it for ages, you know, because I remember this being brilliant, this film. Yeah. Yeah, this is this this was one of the films that you just watch as a kid and you just go, God, I want to do that. I want to do all of this stuff in my garage. And I did. I did all this in my garage. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> I did. I think it's probably still there in my parents' garage. Some of my stuff that I've got hanging from the beams, the big uh, the punch bag and the... The speedball thing I had set up. Oh, yeah. And I had a... a Bruce head. Lee's corpse. Yeah, yeah he's, he's there, yeah. Um, quite a few corpses, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know some of them. Um, I, I, had, I had a ball as well. You know, like he, he puts the, the ball that he hangs from a, the beam. Yeah. Yeah, I had a an old football in a uh, in a gym bag. And then I hung that from the ceiling from a rope because I didn't have a ball. I wanted a floor-to-ceiling ball. But I, I couldn't get one because obviously I had to. I'd have had to drill into the the floor. Yeah, I didn't do that, so I just hung that from the ceiling. So yeah, see this film. It's got a lot to answer for. Yeah. in Ken's life. <laughs> <laughs> it's alive! It's alive! It's alive! I got some taglines for you, Ken. You ready? Always. Tonight, he either fights for his life, or he'll be running for the rest of it. 
<laughs> no. When life is on the line, there can be no retreat, no, no surrender. No, that, that, that's okay. I don't mind that one. I like the ones that lead into the title of the yeah, film. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll have that one. You'll have that one, not yeah, the first one. Not the right. first one, that. I'll make a note. Uh, I was looking at the trivia for this film as well, and predominantly it's just pretty much about Van Damme hurting his his fellow actors in the film <laughs> during the, <laughs> the scenes. I think he was pretty well, like especially early on in his films, to be quite rough with his because he's obviously like, uh, couldn't pull the punch or anything. Yeah, yeah. Well, we start the film anyway, and we get some funky music as a caption. It's Los Angeles, yes. nineteen eighty. I think it was eighty four. This was shot and then released two years later. So this is eighty four Los Angeles, Ken. Does it bring it all back to you? Uh, yeah, yeah, and, and that's the kind of music we all listen to. <laughs> yeah, just generic bullshit, <laughs> as it was known. It's the great, name of the band. Great, great era of music. <laughs> I'll tell you what, this film does not tap into generic bullshit <laughs> as a genre. <laughs> Yeah, as Ken says, it's karate class. It's being held by Daddy Stillwell, um, Tom Stillwell. He's leading it. There's a there's a big mixture in this class, isn't there? You got little yeah. kids. <laughs> I've written this. Yeah, <laughs> you got you got some like adults. There's like an, an a man who's about eighty who's got a a yellow belt. Then there's a child of about seven who's got a black belt. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> I'd probably like to think I could probably take both of them. <laughs> Possibly even at the same time. Yeah, yeah. And then, I think that to this day, I still think I could. <laughs> yeah. I'll go back and find them. You've obviously got uh, you got Tom who's leading. Who's got a black belt, and then we meet our hero Jason, um, red belt. Not very good, is it? Red belt in the hierarchy of karate. Is it not? No, it's not. No, it's quite poor. What a dickhead. Ours was. He seems a bit old to be just at red, then, doesn't he? Yeah, well, he says later on he's been doing it for three years. Mm. He must be shit. <laughs> but, um, I think that's what RJ says, isn't oh, it? Yeah, he does, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he just beats him up as well. <laughs> uh, no, no, back, back in my day, I mean, I don't know if it was the same karate. You've got to assume it is. It was Yellow Belt was the very first one. And then you got the white, because Yellow Belt meant uh, beginner. You had to earn that as well, though. Um, and then it went to red after white. Mm. So it was like the third one in. But I don't know. I don't know if it's different over in Los Angeles in the 1980s. What did you get to? Eighth degree black belt? Uh, no, 15th. <laughs> <laughs> 15th degree black belt, 18th Dan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, nothing. In standing you shih tzu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and sitting. <laughs> Shitting who, sit, who shits there. <laughs> <laughs> Which is what I used to ask when I knocked on the cubicle doors. <laughs> when you used to patrol the, uh, yeah, the toilet at yeah. work, From I remember. Brown belts everywhere. <laughs> Elbow! Elbow! Leg lock! Straight punch! Leg lock! Straight punch! Leg lock! Leg lock! Straight punch! Stop! We got some Bruce Lee sounds from Jason. He gets a bit carried away when they turn to do some sparring. I think he, he does, yeah, because like everything's regimented, isn't it? I mean, the, the, his dad is yelling out the moves. They're all performing the moves. So it's a choreographed uh, training. And even the sparring, they face each other. And then it's like punch, block, uh, repeat punch and all that. So they're doing that. Yeah, and he just goes all Bruce Lee. Felt sorry for that guy. Yeah, starts he doing punches the... him in the bloody face. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> starts Knocks doing him that. out. Yeah, yeah, I've never liked other people doing it. Yeah. No, nah, it makes me think of it's like a cat. <laughs> Don't like it. Yeah. I'll accept Bruce Lee doing it, obviously. He does have to remind Jason that this is not Bruce Lee's discipline and then names the discipline. I can't remember. Jeet Kundu. Why does he idolise Bruce Lee if he doesn't even do the same fucking... I don't know. It's just plot development, isn't it? Right. You can't have a ghost of Chuck Norris. He was making better films than this in the 80s. <laughs> and he's still alive. <laughs> exactly. You can't, you can't conjure him up. It's not sidekicks. I'd have loved it if they'd have fucking done that, though, and, and got someone as bad a lookalike as this guy was for Bruce Lee. <laughs> Could have got the be. same bloke. Should have just got Aaron. Aaron <laughs> Norris. Got the same bloke to be Chuck Norris's <laughs> yes, ghost. <that'd> be it. <laughs> 
<laughs> I was say, I look more like Bruce Lee than this bloke. <laughs> yeah, let's just get any Chinese bloke. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Just find one. Well, it should be said that he was a stand-in for uh, for Bruce Lee in Game of Death and Game of Get. Uh, in Game of Death and Game of Death 2. In the Dame of Geth. Yeah. Uh, business is about to pick up, though, after the terrible acting from the dad. He is a fucking nightmare in this film, this guy. Yeah, I'm not, I'd say I don't think any of these are actors, are they? No. He's never said a sentence correctly in his life, this, this dad. <laughs> <laughs> business is picking up because it's Jean-Claude Van Damme looking yes, very he, dapper. He looks great in this bit, doesn't he? Yeah, he has a Rolls Royce pulling up and there's suits, men in suits arrive. Yeah. Yeah, white suit. Van he's, got, he's got a full white suit, hasn't he? White shirt, red tie. Looks the business. And we find out that the dad has refused to join the organisation. Yeah. We're guessing mafia. Yeah, uh, they've come from New York. Uh, there's a guy in just a normal suit who does the talking. And there's also a guy who's turned up in a karate gi, which is <laughs> just, nice just of him. In, just yeah. in case, <laughs> with a tie. Yeah, they so said they've come from New York. New York. Uh, and he says, well, I'm terribly sorry, waste your time, uh, but I shall decline your offer. Now, I've had a look, and to get from New York to Los Angeles, it would be a six-hour six flight or a 41-hour drive. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm not sure which one he, they've done. They've arrived in a car, and it's a Rolls-Royce, and they've driven themselves, I think, unless they've got a driver I didn't see. But, uh, yeah, you're going to guess it's a flight. Yeah, yeah. so they've turned up uh, six hours, and he just says, nope. <laughs> <laughs> that's a long way to go, isn't it? Yeah. Well, um, unfortunately, they think that's an awful long way for us to come, to be told no, so we're going to have to beat the shit out of you. Did you think over our proposal, Mr. Stillwell? Yes, I did. And I'm sorry you came all the way from New York and I don't want to waste any more of your time. Meaning? Meaning. I must decline your offer. If money's the problem, things can be worked out. That's not it. I won't join. Your organization. And there's a fight. There has to be an example must be made of you. The dad tries to say... Karate is not to be used aggressively. He says, but if I have no other choice, <laughs> I will use it aggressively. The class, they or they went to hit the showers. They come back, still dressed in their geese, though. So yeah, I yeah, I don't think not. they just went to have a quick uh, fumble around with each other. So they come back to watch this, and... Um, he's winning, to be honest, the dad. Well, he, he beats up sort of little gee man, doesn't he? Yeah, he's um, he's he's in it again later on, isn't he, though, this guy? So, yeah. yeah he, he's, he's one of the top henchmen. Um, but yeah, d- daddy's still well. Uh, it seems to be seems to be winning this fight, which is quickly stopped by uh, Jean Claude Van Damme coming in with his first bit of action in a slow motion, leaps off New York Fighters number one uh, shoulder, and just kicks Papa Stillwell away, and just goes. <laughs> no, I think he does more of that later in his career. I don't think it's much of that at all. There's more <laughs> in this one from him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but. Um, yeah, it, it's it's a good it's a good first kick, and it's in slow motion, so you know it's impressive. You bastards! When they were filming that kick. They were supposed to hit him in the chest and ended up hitting... They, they redid it a few times. He ended up hitting him in the throat, the face, <laughs> the knee. No wonder this Stillwell bloke doesn't want to be in this film. Yes. <laughs> Will you stop well, it? Well, that Stillwell bloke actually was a witness in a court uh, for against JCVD. There's an actor called Jackson Rock Pinkney. Nice. Who was in Cyborg with oh, yes. Jean-Claude Van Damme and was partially blinded in his left eye when Van Damme stabbed him in it with a like a rubber prop knife. So he took him to court, and uh, Tim D. Baker, who plays Daddy Stillwell, uh, was one of the witnesses uh, for the prosecution. Ooh, and said he does play rough. Yeah, he does it without, you know... Knowing what the hell Without is care, yeah. yes. You Knowing he's supposed to stop. Yeah, and um, interestingly enough, Ron Ponnell was on the defence. 
saying that he does, in fact, know what he's doing, who played Ian Whirlwind Riley. Oh, yeah. He came to Van Damme's defence and said, no, no, he is accomplished. Yeah, but just this ain't ballet. Ooh. I probably probably said that. Anyway, uh, yeah, you'd still hope not to get blinded at work, though, wouldn't you? Well, I guess <laughs> that's what the that's what the judge said, and actually awarded Pinkney four hundred eighty seven thousand dollars in damage. Oof. Let's hope he earns a lot of money then, as this hoodlum Ivan the Russian. Yeah, in order to pay for this. But anyway, yeah, nice kick. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back with a contract, Mister Stillwell. Until then, get some rest. Well, his son Jason, he attempts to help him out, help his old man out. Van Damme, like, breaks his leg, doesn't he? Yeah, he does, yeah. He, he, he grabs uh, Papa Stillwell's leg and just knees it downwards. So Jason jumps in at this point and is given short shrift by Van Damme. Yeah, he just basically grabs grabs his hand when he tries to punch him. And then he grabs his other hand when he tries to punch him a second time. Mm. He's rubbish, to be honest with you. Anyway, the bad guys leave, and you you got uh, Dad just left screaming on the floor for his son, uh, saying that his leg's broken. <laughs> he really screams a lot, doesn't he? Tonight! 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 He actually says fighting them is not the answer. Yeah. That's what Daddy fucking... What's his name? Daddy Sensei. Yeah, and he says, so what is? And then we have a little cut. Mm. Little cut straight away there to a hospital. Where uh, Papa is in there, he's just on his own, got some, like, I don't know, just marks on his face, are supposed to be bruises, but not really convincing. And he's got a little internal monologue going on, hasn't he? Yeah, where he's <laughs> just looking round the room. Yeah, yeah where he's, he's discussing uh, the fact that they're going to take over all dojos as the front for organised crime. <laughs> You know, because that's what they do, the mafia, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> that's, what, that's, that's what they always go for. Let's go, let's have dojos. I don't understand. How is that even... What are they doing? They're from New York. What are they doing in Los Angeles? Anyway, <laughs> Los Angeles not got any mafia or anything. Thinking, we'll have the dojos. Why would you even want the fucking dojos? Oh, what's that going to do? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> you can launder money through a dojo. Well, they can. And fucking my hell. God, they want to. They're going to take they them really all. Do, he says they? all of them. You're going to take all the dojos. He says. So he's he's got to get out. Where's that businessman going up to the old guy? It turns up later and he's like, I know, I know a good money making scheme. <laughs> dojos, very big right now. Dojos. Yeah, he was there thinking, what the extinct bird? What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> You know, you know, with all those kids paying like I don't know five bucks to go and have a fucking lesson. Yeah. Can't be every night either, can it? No, exactly. it's not good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gee, yeah, once a week, yeah. they rent a studio out. Yeah, so anyway, that, that's the mafiosa plan. That's what they want. They want all dojos. That's why I had to leave my dojo back in the 80s. The, Rus- yeah, the Russian the, mafia. The mafia came the in. The New York yeah. mafia. Yeah, flew over. Oh. I was in Birmingham, England. And they flew over for here as well. Do you reckon they... <laughs> they're, they're reach. They've got a massive reach, the New the York Mafia. The long arm of the New York Mafia. <laughs> Do you reckon they tried taking Cobra Kai? Uh, possibly. They didn't uh, account for Captain Kreese, <laughs> who was camouflaged in the corner <laughs> by his plant. That killer. It was Krasinski, the Russian. All the major dojos as fronts for organized crime. I know they'll be back. What should I do? I I can't risk my family. There's nothing else to do but leave. The next shot is them in the National Lampoon station wagon. Yeah, I wrote that. Yeah, they borrowed uh, Griswold's (laughs) station wagon for the trip. Um, And they drive to Seattle. And I've looked that up. Do you know how long that would have taken them? Go on. 18 hours to drive. And we do know they've driven because we see them do it. Nice. Yeah. But I thought I'd look it up because I was a bit, a bit you know, I'm, I'm not from America, as you can probably tell. But I, I did think they're not as close to these places as we probably think they are. And they're not at all. Yeah. <laughs> None of these places are close. So they, they pack up and they move to Seattle, or as we call it, cowboy country. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, Make my day. <laughs> <laughs> so, what I'm asking you, Ken, is do they know anyone in this city? Like, they've literally upended and moved there, but do they know no, it's anyone? A, it's a whole new state. No. Yeah, Nobody knows Later anyone. on. Yeah, I know, later on. I've written that down as well. Yeah, but no, they don't know anybody at all. Of course they don't. He's just gone. He's gone out of there. Yeah. It's the closest place he could find where he didn't have a dojo. 
<laughs> that would know him at yeah. all. He was that, he was that popular. So um, this is Karate Kid vibes already, the moving yeah. away to a different state. Yeah. Jason... This, this is actually also one of the very, very few scenes that we get to see that he has got a mom who then just fucks off again for like another hour and then pops back in a bit later on and then just fucks off again. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it twice, I think. Once to drive them to Seattle, <laughs> which is nice of her. Uh, and then the next one is to drive him to the shops. Yeah, I mean, it would have probably just been easy just to have him as a single dad, wouldn't it? Yeah, I don't know, though. I don't know the point of her character. Exactly. There's yeah. a lot of that in this film. Yeah, a lot yeah, of pointless yeah. characters. Yeah, but, I mean, you'd I'd imagine she'd be quite an integral part of it. But she, I say she's in it twice. This is one of them. And then she's not in it again for another hour. Mm. Un- unusual, but there you go. Jason gets out of the car and attempts a joke with his dad. It's like, this way, sir, or whatever, trying to get him out of the car. He's broken leg, and that's just like, quit screwing around and get back to work. <laughs> you goddamn son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. He's got a Bruce Lee shirt on. First signs of... This is Jason. Yeah, not his dad. How much he loves Bruce Lee. Yeah. He goes to the garage and sets up his training gym, just like Ken did all those years ago. Yeah. Yeah, his, his mum says, can you go and get those heavy boxes, please? Go and help me bring all this in, otherwise I'll have to do it on my own, like I've just driven your fucking 18 hours solid without a rest. <laughs> you know, but now I've got to lift everything because your dad's a cripple. So I've got to do all that. You could at least help me, couldn't you? Go and get some boxes, you little shit. And instead, he's just like, fuck off, mum. Gets his own stuff out, runs to the garage and sets it up immediately. What if she's in the kitchen thinking, where the fuck is he now with them boxes? <laughs> and he's dicking around in his garage. Well, even worse than saying no, mum. He's like, oh, yeah, definitely. But then just takes his own stuff and Exactly, leaves. yeah. <laughs> Bastard. He's got, he's got the punch bag, the, the speed ball attached by rope to the ceiling. He puts up all of his... He immediately dicks around as well, though, doesn't he? Like, yeah. smashes through some shelving. And yeah. He's like, whoops. He's like, what do you think was going to happen? You just kick some shelves. So of course, they're going to fall over. Yeah. Dick. Anyway, we hear some rap music and Tito Jackson turns up <laughs> on his yeah, bike. He's introduced by uh, Jason going back for more of his own stuff <laughs> uh, and a basketball bouncing off from the box and uh, into the street. Thankfully, a BMX turns up and who's riding it? Tito Jackson. <laughs> Here he is. Shamong. <laughs> yeah, it, it's the character known as RJ. He tells us his full name. It's bullshit, so I don't care. Yeah, he's very. He shows off his basketball skills and then throws it to Jason, who does the same. And they're both very impressed with each other's ball dribbling. Yes, yes, they do enjoy each other's balls. And they talk property values. RJ offers him his services to help the move, so they're going to be fast friends. They certainly are. And at least you've made friends that quick. Yeah, every time I move house. <laughs> <laughs> It's more, more than the guy in The Karate Kid, though. Remember when he just kicked that door into that kid's face? Yeah. And they became the best of friends and never saw him again for the rest of the yeah. film. <laughs> yeah. Remember that bit? Well, I wish that did happen with RJ. Yeah, it would have been a much better. I'd have kicked a door into his face at every opportunity, to yeah. be honest. He's annoying as fuck, this well, guy. Yeah, instantly, because he offered to help, and then as soon as he carries one box, he starts complaining. Yeah. <laughs> well, I wouldn't be so eager to offer my assistance. Like, it's like, shut the hell fuck up. Fuck off home, then. Hey, nice move. Hey, thanks. My name's RJ. How you doing? Hi, Jason. What's RJ stand for? Rafer Jefferson Madison the Third. Wow. No wonder you use RJ. Yeah. You moving in? No, we just came for the weekend. We travel light. That's good. I was afraid the property values were going down. I'll tell my dad not to worry. Uh, can I give you a hand with any of this? Yeah, sure. We can always use some help. Don't expect to get paid much, though. No sweat. I'll just have my accountant bill you. We get a brief glimpse of uh, Butch the Bully from Cool Cat. <laughs> yeah, he's all grown up, isn't he? Yeah, there he is, there. He's eating a, a, a child's birthday cake to himself. <laughs> a whole cake, isn't yeah. he? He's eating it out just off the platter. It yeah. came on, yeah. I, I've seen that. He's got chocolate smeared all over his face. Yeah. He's a very, very unlikable character. Yeah. And, of course, takes an instant dislike to Jason for yeah, no reason whatsoever. This is all great. A Bruce Lee freak. That's all we need. Just because he's got a T-shirt on. Yeah. <laughs> and he is. Well, he's carrying a wooden man fighting aid, isn't he? So, yeah. I guess, you know. I mean, he is right. He is a Bruce Lee freak, but he shouldn't know that just from... He wouldn't know what a... F- oh, mind you, he would, wouldn't he? Because yes, he's a fucking martial yeah. artist, this guy. <laughs> oh, no, kind of, I guess. Old tubby checker over here. Yeah. And this that, that the guy there is actually uh, called Scott. Just some fat fucker. I don't know how old these kids are supposed to be. Bruce Lee freak. Just what Kingswood needs... Why me? 
poster of Bruce Lee straight up there. Yeah, nice. Uh, there's actually posters all over the place. It's similar. Like this happens actually to Van Damme himself in uh, Fatal Deviation. <laughs> oh, what the fuck is this? Yeah, no, now little bollocks. <laughs> there's pictures of him up, isn't there, all through uh, his room? Yes, yeah, there is. Yeah, and uh, the the main man of Fatal Deviation is about forty. <laughs> but he's still at the children's convent. He's a big, big fan. And that's what's happening here with the <laughs> Bruce. Convent. It's a reform school. Whatever. He's not a nun, is he? <laughs> Irish nun. Jimmy Bennett. Irish nun sounds like a fucking wine or something. <laughs> Jimmy Bennett, the Irish nun you never want to meet. Irish priest. <laughs> oh, be Jesus. That's the tagline. The devil is among us. <laughs> Let us fucking pray. <laughs> What the fuck is this? He tries to get RJ to dodge the uh, the speedball, ends up hitting him in the face with it, because RJ, he's a, he's a dancer, he's not a fighter. I wish we just accepted his word for that. Yeah. And we didn't need to prove it to us, but now he does decide he has to prove it to us and just, just fucking irritated the hell out of Jesus it. Jesus Christ. He's definitely more Tito than Michael, isn't he, with this, these dance moves? Well, the music starts. I don't know where the music comes from, because I don't think he presses play, does it? I think it's just like a... The, the soundtrack puts yeah. some music over the top of it yeah. but it's out of time to what he's saying because the music's far too fast it starts off in time but then obviously he can't, he can't keep that pace up he raps about fucking nothing and then he does some stupid little dancing and then he falls over obviously because he does the same thing with the shelves I don't yeah. know why everyone thinks these shelves are going to last but thankfully he's watched the Mr. T video about recouping but when you fall <laughs> over you break dance yeah. so he break dances right back up oh hi there I'm Dr. T. Have you ever been embarrassed, ashamed, or exposed? I mean, done something so absolutely ludicrous that you wish you could have moved to a deserted island and had your head in the sand? I mean, check this out. Oh, what? Yo, Jace, check me out. Yeah, float like a butterfly, spin like a bee. No, 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 that's not how you do it. Dodge it. Again. Ooh, it's not even hard. Look at you. Oh, I'm just feeling embarrassed. Again! Whoa! <laughs> 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 Come on. Come over here, let me show you something else, all right? Yeah. Now, how can that little brother recoup? Let's run that again. <laughs> hey, what is this? It's a wooden man, and it's used for, like, blocking and punching techniques. Watch. Aw, oh, is that it? <laughs> I can do better than that. Watch this. <laughs> Well, I dance a bit, and now I'm really quick. I rap to the beat so viciously. Why you go imitating? Bruce Lee. I like to feel my highs, I like to feel my lows. Why you rock, 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 try to kick with your soul? I'll do it for you now, and I'll show you how. I rock to the beat, so watch my feet. All right. Not bad. Hey, ain't no shelf made to mess up this dancing machine. Is that recouping, or is that recouping? So the next time you find yourself in an absolute ludicrous situation, don't go hide your head in the sand. Recoup instead. Recouping. One out of one, Dr. T's recommended. Then he says, hey, how long have you been doing it? He says, three years. And he says, you must be pretty good. And he says, no, I'm pretty shit. I'm only a red belt. And he laughs in his face, kicks him in the bollocks and runs off. And he says, my friend's a black belt and he's only been doing it two years. Yeah. He's so six years old. <laughs> Maybe you've although, met him. Although his granddad's a yellow belt. <laughs> <laughs> He's been doing it since he was six years old. He's really shit. Yeah. Then he, he, he talk about Bruce Lee, don't know, and he says, oh, uh, he was buried in Seattle. He says, really, do you know where? He says, of course I do. He says, right, can we go? Yes, I'll take you tomorrow. Yeah. yeah so clearly it's the middle of summer. They're not at school because they can always just go and do stuff the next day. So this is not weekends we're talking about. This is just every day. So, yeah, I, I made a note of that because, obviously, a bit later on, he's like, how does he know people? Yeah. Um, book pages stuck to a massive wooden board. Mm -hmm. It's like all the text. Surely that's easy just to have it in the book rather than... A <laughs> just open the book. You've got to carry a massive long... Because it's a really long board yeah. to have all the pages stuck to it. <laughs> Might as well just keep them in the book. What about the other side of the page? Yeah, exactly. What about when he's finished that page? And he's thinking, <laughs> oh shit, what's, what's next? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you bloody idiot. Yeah, it's, it's night time and he's doing some more training. Yeah, he can't get the final kick on the punch bag, falls over onto his back. Yeah, frustration. He's only a red belt, for God's sake. What do you expect from him? 
Well, I'm expecting a massive improvement during several training montages. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. It's a bold idea, Ken. Let's well, see I'll, see, I'll see how it goes. Uh, Butch the Bully's dad's a shit actor, isn't he? Oh, he, he's out of breath, isn't he? As soon as he starts talking, <laughs> yeah. he's like he's gone back inside for a stroke. <laughs> Pardon that expression. <laughs> he's absolutely livid. His son's messing around he's got, he's spraying a, cans. Yeah, he's got a, like, a jet washer, isn't he? Pressure washer. And he's blowing Coke cans across his own lawn. Yeah. Do you know how many there were? Twelve. Seven. Oh, there were seven empty cans. So he's, what, just sat on his yard drinking seven cans of Coke. Full fat Coke. <laughs> and eating potato chips. Yeah. Anyway, his dad comes out. Yeah, he's not happy. Well, for you Americans, potato chips. <laughs> My God. <laughs> if you've watched The Greasy Strangler, <laughs> that's one of my favourite scenes of anything. I'm not doing it. I can't do it. But, yeah, you can't say potato. <laughs> it's brilliant. It anyway, yeah, back to this shit. Yeah, his dad comes out and uh, in between gasping for breath after walking down three steps, tells him to say, get off his fat ass and wash those windows. Yeah. How old is he supposed to be? That's what I, mean, I don't know how old any of them are. He, he's got to be 30, I did. <laughs> Why is he acting like a child? I don't know. He's kind of like Francis, isn't he, from Pee Wee? Yeah, he is he's, a bit. He's like, and Butch the Bully. He's, he's like a combination of the both of them. And Franklin from Texas Chainsaw. <laughs> Yeah, just generally annoying and fat. Yeah. Is <laughs> was what you get from that. Childish, annoying and fat. That was in the audition piece. And he was yeah. like, hey, daddy, that's me. Yeah. I think his dad turns up later, actually, to be the bully for Jason's dad at the bar. <laughs> they look very similar. <laughs> oh, he, yeah, he does look like the actor, yeah. But yeah. there's nothing like the actor playing his dad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He'd have been out of breath. Although that guy was like, almost asleep on the pool table, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah. uh, we'll get to him in a bit. Yeah, we get more rap music. Only mean one thing. RJ's here. He's on a skateboard. Uh, but yes. just... RJ's constantly just like dancing and being happy and waving his arms at nothing, isn't he? Yeah. What an annoying bastard he would yeah, be. What an annoying bastard. Yeah. What, a, what an annoying trope. Yeah. God, that would do my head in. That would. Yeah. And just constantly like, just like, whoa, like massive smiles at fucking nothing. Well, you'll like this next bit, because Butch the Bully tries to rape him, I think. <laughs> I think he does, yeah. He hides behind his little fence, doesn't he? Yeah. With his pressure washer nozzle. And uh, right when he's close up, he just jumps out and sprays him in right in the chest, doesn't he? Which I think would hurt. Mm. I mean, if you know, if you ever just stuck your hand in front of a pressure washer, that's powerful, that. It blows seven cans of Coke across your lawn. <laughs> it's got some power. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and just, like, blows him clean off his uh, skateboard. Jesus. Yeah, and then he and then he uh, he just like fake leaps on him, yeah. doesn't he? Because he's right in front of him, and he doesn't actually like splash like a wrestler, but he pretends he's jumping down upon him. Yeah, and then he doesn't really do anything, doesn't he? he? Just sort of molests him. That's what I mean. Just yeah. sort of feels him up. Uh, RJ bites him and and skates off, and then we get a comedic chase scene with some very supportive construction workers. It is an absolutely hilarious scene, isn't it? That I was I was rolling on the floor laughing. Literally, I was doing that for possibly about 12 minutes. I had to pause the film because it yeah. was so funny. No, fucking rubbish. Yeah, he, he's off on his skateboard. Uh, Scott, even though he's a big fat chap, he's uh, quite fleet of foot and gives chase and manages to like keep up with him. There's a little uh, construction workers, as Dom's mentioned, there. they're carrying uh, is it a ladder they're carrying together. Yeah. Even though one person could have carried that. Mm-hmm. Um, RJ... He leaps the ladder and lands back on his skateboard. And um, Scott also leaps the ladder. And uh, he gets a little round of applause from everybody. That's what I mean. <laughs> These construction nice workers everyone, yeah. think they're in a music video or something, the way they're all thumbs up and applauding. Yeah, they, they really enjoyed his leap. Yeah. Yeah. And um, RJ does it again, but slightly higher, doesn't he? It's like one of the warning boards that men at work. He leaps that and says, why don't you try this one? And the construction workers are there saying, yeah, you can do it. Yeah. Give that one a go. Go on. Not like, get the fuck out of the way. Yeah, no, we've got fucking work to do. That's what these boards are for, to stop you dickheads from coming in and getting <laughs> in the way of shit. No, it's just like, yeah, go on, you can do it. You can do you it. You can do it. Yeah, so he's like, okay, I am. I'm going to go and do it. This is all whilst he's mid-chase trying to beat somebody up, by the way. You know, all of this. It's amazing how a little bit of comedy like that just lightens the mood. Well, he goes for it. Didn't lie in my mood. <laughs> well, I finally stopped laughing at the whole thing and uh, pressed play again. 
uh, to stop it again after this bit, <laughs> whilst I laughed for a further 14 minutes solid. As he leaps in like a uh, six million dollar man style leap, and as he's about to make <laughs> it over the top, RJ just pushes his skateboard back underneath his feet. So when he lands, he falls over and snaps his neck on the pavement and dies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we all laugh. Yeah, and the construction workers laugh and high five each other. Uh, RJ goes, oh, oh, pulls a stupid face and just leaves, and uh, Scott just dies. Uh, his spine's snapped and yep. uh, he's dead. Just bleeds out as well. Cause it's like horrible, horrible. His head smashed in on the pavement. Uh, anyway, cut to uh, <laughs> <laughs> not that, that happens. Obviously, it's a comedy fall. He just goes, Doh! yeah, and then he just gets up and shouts, "I'll get you, gadget!" Yeah, he says, "Next time we meet, I'll beat you up so bad your mother won't even recognize you." Yeah, I wouldn't recognize his mother because we never see her. No, or his dad. I thought that was his mom and dad at the the discotheque that they go to later. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great if it was. Yeah. <laughs> I like to think it was. Anyway, he goes over to Jason. Jason's standing there like he's going on fucking prom or yeah, something. Yeah, I thought he... I thought, where's he going now? Oh, fucking bunch of flowers in his on hand. a date. Yeah. And he's like, I like this little repartee they've got here. He's like, where you been? He's like, a girl wouldn't let me leave. And yeah. he's just like, save it for the National Enquirer. Like, what? <laughs> Yeah, that's like teenage boy rapes again. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the headline. <laughs> yeah. And then he says, uh, what happened to your clothes? He says, well, yeah, she wouldn't let me leave. And uh, she was real and something like that. I think she he was going to insinuate something. She was real fat. Um... <laughs> <laughs> and called Scott. <laughs> yeah. Yo, Kimosabe. Thought we said 10 o'clock, RJ. Where have you been? Oh, this is new girl. She wouldn't let me leave. Save it for the National Enquirer. What happened to your clothes? That's what I'm trying to tell you. I had to sprint all the way over here. But hey, you wouldn't believe what she could do with her. Shut up and get in the car. Yeah, anyway, let's go to uh, Bruce Lee's grave. And they do. This is actually yep. Bruce Lee's fucking grave. Yeah, I thought there'd be more people there, to be honest. Yeah. I thought there'd be people there pretty much all the time, wouldn't there? At I least somebody so. somebody must always be there. Yeah, I, go- I did Google the grave, and it is actually the same one. I'm surprised that they allowed that. Must have had to have got permission. You'd think from, from the estate. Yeah, yeah but I, I don't know. I mean, they are treated it respectfully, I, think, I guess. Yeah. The picture on the grave is different to the one I see when you Google it. I don't know if it's, it's changed, but I kind of... Um, it's kind of weird knowing, like, when he gets on shot, like, next to that now is Brandon Lee's grave. Mm. So it's kind of it's a, kind of weird seeing that and seeing it on its own there. Obviously, Brandon Lee hadn't passed away at the time. Well, that's brought it down a little bit, hasn't it, ladies and gentlemen? <sighs> anyway, he puts flowers on Bruce Lee's grave. Well, he... Actually, let's just call it end there. Let's just, we'll <sighs> see you again next time. Go okay, and watch but... The Crow, will you, for fuck's sake. <laughs> and then go and watch uh, that one where he talks about Dolph Lundgren's dick. <laughs> Showdown in Little Tokyo. That's the one. Go watch that. <laughs> it's the biggest I've ever seen on a man. You didn't get Bruce saying shit like that, did you? No. It's the smallest dick, he said. <laughs> it is not the size that matters. <laughs> <laughs> you have some mystical bullshit about his dick. Yeah. <laughs> Kenner, just in case we get killed, I wanted to tell you, you have the biggest dick I've ever seen on a man. Thanks. He tells the headstone anyway, uh, his life story, and how he wants to be just like Bruce. Mm -hmm. Although he's studying karate, which is from Japan, and not any kind of kung fu, which is Chinese. Apart from that, he wants to be like him. Apart from getting all of his disciplines and even his countries wrong. Still... We'll overlook it. He says, please give me the courage and the strength to stand up for what I believe. At which point we don't actually know what he believes at all. Because nothing's happened. Um, He believes in... um... He believes that children are our future. Yeah. (laughs) That's what he believes. Butch the Bully is enjoying a burger at the Uh, local diner. Yes, he is, yeah. How many burgers were there on that plate? Did you have a look? Probably about seven. There's more than that, is it? Twelve. There's, I think there's probably more than that. There's about eight 14. of the people there. Eight people there. They all take a burger, and I think there's about six or seven left on the platter. Rothrock was the waitress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what Scott does, as soon as he gets that burger, uh, he says, tuck in, guys, it's on me. So I don't know where he's got his money Literally. From. <laughs> yeah, then he does, just smears washing, a burger into his own face. Washing his dad's windows. <laughs> Yeah, but it's like he's, they're not rich, are they? They're not. They're not exactly a loaded family. I don't know. He's drinking seven cans of fucking coke. He better be rich. <laughs> um, my note is: Would this guy have this many friends? Well, no. Well, if he's buying your burgers, 
Maybe. Maybe you'd stick around just for extra burgers and uh, cheeky fries. Yeah. Uh, do, you, yes. do you know what that restaurant's called, by the way? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah, he, uh, he, he spots... Uh, no, what was it? <laughs> Burger time. <laughs> 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 Which is the right place to go if you want lots of burgers. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, Scott, he's not an idiot. He sees RJ as well. He's, he's walking across the road or dancing or Yeah, he, he does actually say before, they stick with me, kids, and you'll never go hungry. It's just like, what do you mean, kids? How old are you, Scott? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Did you see the guy he's sitting opposite him? Yeah, with his ponytail <laughs> draped over his shoulder like a lady. It's a platted. Yeah, yeah. Who's done that for him? <laughs> His mum. <laughs> was it your mum, was it? <laughs> That's what I wrote down. <laughs> Who's done that for him? His mum. <laughs> yeah, he's got a little plat, little rat's tail and mullet as well. It is. It's not even long on top. He's yeah. just, the, just the sides are slicked back into a plaited little ponytail hey, over mom, his can shoulder. Can you plait my hair before I go for a burger with Butch the Bully at <laughs> burger time? I'm going out with the gang, Mom. Before we go to the dojo. <laughs> anyway, he sees RJ and he says, hey guys, just do what me one favour. Stop this guy from leaving. Yeah, they do say, why do you hate this guy so much? And he says, I've got my reasons. He Which we, ne- we never find out. Yeah, I'm assuming it is, because we don't ever find out why he hates him. Or hates the Jacksons. <laughs> yeah, he's just there, tearing gloves off people, isn't he? Yeah, just All the time. anyone that's wearing one glove. Yeah, he fights them. They do surround RJ. They surround him about three times, don't they, where he just keeps escaping, and then they surround him again. Yeah. And then they finally get to surround him. They, they're in like the outside eating area of burger time. He tries to kick Scott, doesn't he? who bounces him off him with his big belly like a WWE fat wrestler. Like Obelisk, Asterisk and Obelisk. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I used to love those books. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it, it's yeah, that, that's what he does. And uh, then he just sort of like roughs him up a little bit. Just a little bit of roughhousing. And then here comes Jason, who just happens to be strolling by as well. And uh, what a good job he does, because uh, he immediately leaps into action to give RJ some assistance. He says, hey, RJ, who's this lard ass? Oh, God, that hurts. That hurts more than the beating. And uh, Butch says, get him. And RJ says, all right, no retreat, no surrender. That's a good name for a film. Yeah. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he says that. They're back to back, aren't they? And uh, then the guy who runs Burger Time comes out and they just all fuck off. Which means, I'm guessing, they retreat. He does look an imposing figure, doesn't he, this <laughs> this guy? <laughs> this guy would have a difficult time beating up that 80-year-old yellow belt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's just some, some old bloke, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he just says, Yeah, you are you kids, oh, you are you, you are Yeah. Yeah, and they all scatter. Chase! Hey, RJ. Who's the lard ass? Beat it, Brucey. Go out home and play with your wooden dolly. Take a walk, fat boy. You stay out of this or you're going to get hurt. This is between him and me. Get him! All right, no retreat, no surrender. Everybody break it up, break it up. You better be glad the ski came along, Brucey! Next time I'm going to kill you! Uh, we cut to Jason. He's getting some shit from his dad. Yeah, not sure how his dad knows about any of this. He says fighting is for punks. Yeah, he shouts that right at him. It's wrong, it'll just get you in more trouble. Yeah, you should never fight. Never, ever, do you hear me? Never fight, ever. I like this this, uh, <laughs> this little bit of dialogue here where he, Jason says, are you trying to raise a son or a clone? And the dad replies with, I don't know what I've raised. <laughs> <laughs> and even he's like, what? <laughs> Yeah, he is actually, he is a, a, a droid. <laughs> he says... Uh, I like the way that he shouts, I'm not a child! <laughs> just not, not even looking at him, just shouts it into the like, into the wall. He does, yeah, <laughs> as he's leaving. Which is perfectly childish thing to do. He's like, go to your room! <laughs> and yeah, we get some intense go to your room music. Yeah. And he looks at Bruce Lee picks in anger, doesn't he? Yeah, gets Br- up Bruce, Bruce Lee's staring at him and all of them, as if to say... <laughs> yeah. And he starts hitting the punch bag like a fucking... Yeah, it's total wild, isn't yeah. it? Wildly kicking He's crying. and punching stuff. Like his some... dad bollocked him. Yeah, that's what I used to do. <laughs> Jason, fighting is for punks! Dad, I was helping a friend. Doesn't that mean anything to you? Fighting is wrong! It's just gonna get you in more trouble. It got me out of trouble today. Sure. Trouble you never would have been in before. 
Dad, you never listened to me. I've heard all before, Jason. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. Watch your tone of voice with me, young man. It's not my tone of voice, Dad. It's, it's the fact that I don't agree with you, isn't it? Just because I don't agree doesn't mean I'm wrong. In this house, what I say counts. Are you trying to raise a son or a clone? I don't know what I've raised. What? <laughs> we get a seamless cut into the middle of town now. <laughs> And there's a pro kickboxing fight going on. Yeah, again, this looks like it's just wild, no skills whatsoever, this, yeah. doesn't it? It's just like swinging at nothing. And it's, yeah, I, mean, I thought that. I was thinking, what's this? Yeah, I mean, it's obviously clear from later on that this guy who plays Ian is a, mar- is a martial artist, but good God, he's not an actor. <laughs> <laughs> the, the bit at the end when we when we find out RJ and Jason are watching it on TV and he's yeah. just there with the trophy and he's like yeah. thumbs up and smiling. Oh my god, that bit's horrible it's to on, watch. It's on TV. Yeah. Whatever the hell this is. He's on <laughs> bloody telly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The local fucking karate <laughs> tournament. It's live on TV. Fucking hell. Yeah. Anyway. Um they're like, hey, this looks super cool. Let's go check the place out. Yes, tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He says, this looks totally wild. Uh, he's just like, hey, that's Ian Riley. He lives around here. Can we go to his house? Yes, let's go tomorrow. Bye. <laughs> Ian Whirlwind Riley. <laughs> yeah, and uh, he knows he knows where his dojo is. Uh so we immediately cut that scene and goes to his dojo the next day. Yeah. Ne- next day, immediately. Did you and- did you see what was on the wall there as they walked in? What was it? A picture of the sensei, full camo, next to a plant. <laughs> <laughs> in his in his office <laughs> next to his filing cabinet and his plant <laughs> <laughs> I sent a crease in the forks <laughs> I like how they include the signing up form scene that was vital to the <laughs> the forwarding of the plot sorry what it wasn't a lot of things to fill in was it <laughs> he just filled his name it's in it's like dark place isn't it <laughs> yeah. it's like that. have I got time to go to the toilet not really I've just got <laughs> like yeah. that. hi I'm Dean <laughs> it's like immediately he just says, yes, you just have to fill that in. Get more, RJ. Uh, <laughs> do you need help spelling your name? Oh, fuck off. <laughs> and then he says, have you finished that yet? <laughs> How did he even know somebody was filling something in? What was he like? She pressed the like, silent alarm underneath the desk. Yeah. Somebody's signing up. Somebody's signing up. <laughs> yeah. He's just out of shot standing on one leg, <laughs> just in a <laughs> lotus pose or whatever. Yeah. Anyway, this is Dean. Uh, this is Dean, and he's, uh, he's going to be taking the class. We also see Bush the bully. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you wouldn't believe this, but uh, yeah, he's there as well. He's there with it. He's got a headband on, hasn't he? Yeah, it's for the blood. Yeah, anyway, whilst they're doing that bullshit, Scott, big fat Scott, he's saying to Dean, hey, that guy's the one who beat me up. He's been saying that Seattle karate is rubbish and he's better because he does Los Angeles karate. You know, the classic, yeah. classic 17-hour-away drive rivalry that they've got. <laughs> <laughs> I like how he instantly believes Butch. He does, he does yeah. Scott, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so Dean's just like, well, we'll show him then, that son of a bitch. Yeah, no one makes fun of Seattle karate in my dojo. <laughs> this yeah. is actually Ian's dojo, but he's away. He explains this. Ian's away at a tournament. I don't know if you've seen it. It was on TV, but I'm looking after the place today whilst he's not here. Yes, we did see it on TV. We watched it last night together, and that's why we're here now today. Wow, this is sure sure is a nice <laughs> dojo. <laughs> yes, if it's that good. I might join. I think you should. Bye. Thank you, Dean. Don't call me Dean. Okay, Dean, I will never do that again. <laughs> so what he does is he gets Black Belt Frank. Frank Peters. He says the words, I'm nobody's lunch. <laughs> 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 He's right. That's one of my favourite lines of the film. Yeah. I'm going to get it on a t-shirt. <laughs> You like a little kumite? Sure, I'm always ready to fight. Good, there's a good fighter here from L.A. He wants to fight our best people. You're our best. Remember, though, he's good. If you relax at all, he'll eat you up. Eat me up? Okay. Don't worry. I'm nobody's lunch. <laughs> this is, of course, Peter Sugarfoot Cunningham <laughs> playing <laughs> Frank Peters. Yeah, r- real life, isn't yeah. he? A fighter. Yeah, Sugarfoot. Yeah. It's because he's diabetic. It's <laughs> sweet and gives you diabetes. <laughs> yeah. That's his foot. Of course, one man's dream is another man's lunch, Ken. Yeah, well, it ain't sugar foot. No. I'll tell you what, you're not having a dream about him. Uh, he turns up as well, Jason. Like, they're all sitting in a circle around Dean. Jason turns up and does some sort of crouch. Like He goes to sit between two people who don't move for him. And he's just there. He just stumbles into the middle, doesn't <laughs> yeah. he? And uh, Dean says, no excuses. Let's see what you're made of. 
And then yeah. he sees Butch and he tries to explain. He already knows what's what's going to happen. Yeah, he he's knows like, something is a foot. Oh no, wait! And uh, a, sh- a sugar foot. And they decide let's just put a red belt in a full spa, no pads against a black belt. Yeah, it seems legit. It seems with, like that would happen with the sugar foot himself. Yeah, it was nobody's lunch, as Jason is about to find out. And sure enough, Frank starts just beating the shit out of Jason <laughs> yeah, in the he's middle. He's very very fast, isn't he, Frank? <laughs> And you hear Dean saying, so this is L.A. Karate. Yeah, so they're, all, they're all just laughing. They're all just like, might as well be green backlit while everyone laughs. And Jason's like, oh, no, it's not fair. But Jason, to his credit, just keeps on getting back up. And he does. And getting very angry and um, just keeps getting knocked back down again. Do you like Jason's spunk, Ken? I do, yes. I admired it whilst I watched the film again. I thought, I like that spunk. Yeah. Yeah. I thought, I'm glad he showed it. And his balls. Oh, of course, his balls. He showed massive balls. He certainly did, and I enjoyed that as well. When he got up. That's what I enjoyed uh, watching back in the 80s. I always admired his balls then. Yeah. Yeah, I hasn't finished. I'm There's still a re- admiring them now. I've written it down. <laughs> Look at these balls. <laughs> There's a real horrible scene now where RJ shouts and runs over to, to stop the fight. And then they both run away, <laughs> like Napoleon Dynamite or yeah, something. Yeah, but he does, uh, he does go, later, bro. No, to, to, Frank. To, to Frank, the Sugarfoot himself. They couldn't look less impressive, could they? Yeah, they, they, running they just away. skip away and just leave. Just run, run, run just all the way literally home. literally run off. That's yeah. ridiculous. Anyway, cut. Fight! But Dean, what are you afraid of? Fight! Karate. I'm impressed. <laughs> Pool party. Straight, straight to a party. Yeah. Whose party is it? Why, it's Kelly's, of course. Remember Kelly? No. No, nobody remembers Kelly because she hasn't been in it yet, but she's in it now, and it's her birthday. I like how this is our first sign that Dean doesn't know popular sayings. She says, after tonight, Kelly's going to be putty in my arms. <laughs> it's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> she's big, though. I mean, I suppose she's a full-grown girl. Mm. So in his hands, mind you, put in your arms. It's like yeah, um, put in your arms, <laughs> in your hands, man. Like the naked gun, a uh, ghost spoof. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know nothing of putty, Ken. <laughs> putty all over the place. <laughs> putty in my pants. Is my, it's, uh, that was a uh, an album I I made once. It was a solo <laughs> album. It was experimental. How does Jason know any women in the town? He's there getting dressed up I, again. I don't know. I mean, Scott's at the party. Dean's at the party. It turns out it's Ian Riley's little sister, this is. Yeah. Remember Ian Riley? Ian the whirlwind Riley. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's his little sister. But how the hell Jason knows her is just an absolute mystery. Yeah. She doesn't she, know she, Ian. She even tries to like explain it at some point in the next like five minutes. Oh yes, we met last summer. Yeah. Like, like what? Where? <laughs> Seventeen Wait. fucking hour drive. What? I've already discussed this. <laughs> in LA? What are you talking about? When did you meet at Bruce Lee's grave? <laughs> well, that was in Seattle. Exactly. He'd <laughs> never even been, otherwise he'd have driven himself there, not RJ. See, he's got no idea. So anyway, this is absolute bullshit. But still, he's going to to her birthday party. Yeah, and Dean's already there putting the moves on her. And, she, and uh, I think she says something about a party, and he says, oh, yeah, it is a nice party. And then she says, can't you talk like a human being, Dean? <laughs> uh, yeah, because I think he, he gives us some uh, bitching. I think he says bitching or something like that. Bitching in the kitchen. <laughs> Dean's Dean's album. Yeah, that was he. He looks a bit like he could have been uh, Vanilla Ice. Yeah. Dean, couldn't he? I think he got a bit of a Vanilla Ice look on him. He does. Yeah. and. She's not interested. She's not interested in Dean. She only wants Jason if she's never met. Yeah, apart from that once a year ago somewhere. But still, now he's moved there, then it's perfect. Yeah. Got big brother Ian, Whirlwind Riley. He's there. Yeah, he, he gets home with his big trophy. Yeah. And they all go, wow, that's a big trophy. He says, you better fucking believe it, you so, dicks. Yeah. Massively in a... Oh, where the hell am I going to put this? <laughs> well, he actually gives it to uh, Kelly and says, this is another trophy for your room. Yeah, she's like, Will you fuck off with your trophies <laughs> in my room. You, you don't even live here, Ian. Do you see he was in the pool actually with his armbands on and his yellow belt? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that old fella? The old guy, yeah. <laughs> 
just yeah. just she dead met, face down in the pool. She met him a year ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's a friend from LA. <laughs> yeah, well, Ian. So he's he's there and he says, uh, "Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll I've got some stories to tell you guys." And he says, "Everything okay while I was away, Dean? Nothing I couldn't handle." Yeah. He's not telling him. Ian's a good guy. He's including your man. sister. She's going to be <laughs> putty in my feet. <laughs> Anyway, he gets a phone call, Ian, so he got, he's got to take it. Enough of these amazing stories. <laughs> yeah, I'll be back later to tell you more amazing stories. Self-professed amazing stories yeah. from Ian. Did you see what was on his wall? Human shit. It was a full-size fucking duck. <laughs> <laughs> a flying fucking duck. It's a full-size one. Nice. Stuffed in flight. What the fuck? Hello? Mr. Riley. You're talking to him. What can I do for you? If you want to keep your business, be down at your dojo in a half hour. Who is this? A friend of yours from New York. I thought I... Be there. New York, they're calling. Yeah, bloody New York. If he wants to keep his business, he better meet them at his own dojo in half an hour. Yeah, <laughs> I paused it to write that down. As I paused it, Ian the Whirlwind Riley was staring directly at me <laughs> out of the screen. <laughs> Yes, he does. He looks really angry. Looks a bit like Trent Reznor, I thought, at this yeah. point. But, yeah, he's just like got a really like angry-looking face on him, looking directly out at, out of the camera at me. And I was like, <laughs> I laughed out loud at that point as well. And I realised that I'd paused it whilst he was staring at me. He looked upset that I'd paused it. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah. So uh, that, that's the that's the story. Remember, remember the guys from New York. Remember them from like, the beginning. They've worked their way to Seattle. Yeah, they, they've popped in again now. They've popped back into the storyline. You may have forgotten there was one, but this is this is now a bit more of that storyline from earlier. So he, he does get up, he runs out and leaves. He runs into Jason. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's carrying a little box. He just runs square into him, knocks the box over, he picks it picks it back up and says, sorry. <laughs> Which I'm... is hilarious considering yeah, what's in Yeah, the exactly. Box. <laughs> I wrote that down. He says, anyway, I've got to go. See you. He's like, yeah, bye. Kelly's fucking delighted that Jason's here. Yeah, she answers the door within like two seconds of him knocking or ringing, whatever he does. It's a big present considering he doesn't know her. Yeah, and uh, that house, we go into another room in the house and God, it's awful, the decoration in this house. <laughs> You've got the big fuck off ducks for a start. It's this like garish pink chair covers and there's a huge rug like you'd find in a like a pub somewhere. There's a full great white shark on the wall. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> Massive chandelier hanging up from there, nearly touching the bloody table. <laughs> it's, it's a horrible chintzy sort of house. Uh, but he actually says it's nice, nice house. Uh, she says thanks and then some really, really cheesy music comes on whilst he offers the gift. And the gift? The gift is, it's a dead little rabbit, because <laughs> Ian crushed it when he ran headlong into him. <laughs> no, it's not dead somehow. Uh, it is actually just a tiny rabbit. Tiny and little baby. A little, little live rabbit, bunny rabbit. Didn't see any air holes in that. Well, no, plus Ian smashed it out of his hands. <laughs> so, you know, but still... You don't think you can buy people just animals as gifts? Yeah, it seems she like... she hasn't got anywhere to put that yeah, rabbit? Like my parents don't allow me to have kids. Yeah, I've got allergies. Yeah. And, and, and he says, he actually does say, he says, oh, yeah, you, you seem to like it so much at the pet store the other day. It's like, what? <laughs> I, know, I know we don't have to see every day of their lives, but... I don't know, we pretty much have. <laughs> yeah, but yet they've been to a pet store without us knowing who she even is. Yeah. Must have been in the deleted scenes. Yeah. <laughs> Extended director's cut featuring the pet shop scene. This film gives you flashbacks to 20 seconds before. <laughs> so <laughs> surely it could have given us a pet shop scene. Fuck. <laughs> she says, uh, it is a he, isn't it? And he's like, I don't know. I didn't look. But I think so. Very seriously. Yeah. Like she's just sort of joking around a bit. I don't look at rabbit dicks. <laughs> <laughs> That's the stinger for the end of the episode. <laughs> Yeah, and then he slaps her face for suggesting he would. <laughs> and the rabbit's face. She kisses it. Uh, they, they have a kiss and Butch the bully comes in. And... This is uh, her and Jason, not the rabbit. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he calls Dean over silently and Dean turns up. He ain't fucking happy about yeah, it. Yeah, he wants to go and just punch, I think, Kelly and and Jason. Yeah. Both of them just square in the face. Ian's got a great run into his dojo now. Yeah, well, he, he gets called away by Scott and just says, don't go and beat him up and all this. It's all silent because they're uh, mid-smooch. And then they whisper to each other and then just sort of like 
that's the end of that scene. We don't know what they're whispering about. It won't take us long to find out, but still, you know. Then Ian, Ian's brilliant. And he runs. His run is natural, fantastic. as natural as can be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, yeah, it, it's the guys from New York, uh, Soms. Ivan the Russian. Yeah, why is he not, not there? there? He's not there. They've brought another bloke with him. Kind of looks a little bit like Van Damme if you do from from distance. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's got sunglasses on, I guess. That's about hair it. slipped back. <laughs> yeah, but the, these guys are now in Seattle. And I looked that up. Do you know how long that would have taken them to get there from New York? If they'd have uh, flown, it would again have been a six-hour flight. So that's another six hours they've gone. Or if they'd have driven... It would have been 43 hours to drive there. <laughs> <laughs> they really want some dojos, don't they? They really do. That's a massive scope. Yeah, it's like, why? Anyway, they're still looking for dojos to take over. Yeah, and he threatens his sister. He, he somehow knows her name and it's her birthday today. Yeah, old which is more than we did. So, yeah. you know, fair play. He's done his own work. And he threat- if he doesn't get the dojo, he'd hate for something to happen to her. Yeah. He does say no, though. He does, He does. yes. And then they all put up a fighting stance. Yeah. Because they brought the other karate guy, New York karate guy number one. Yeah, he's back. He's still there. He ends up saying, we'll be in touch. And then back six-hour flight again after a 10-second conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then just leaves. Yeah. Thanks for coming, Ian. Uh, cut to Kelly showing off her rabbit to everybody. Yeah. Dean comes into the scene. Um, at this point, of course, the boom mic. I wrote that down. Boom mic! <laughs> yeah. Whilst they're talking about the rabbit, if you do go back and watch that again. Dean again getting the 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 well-known phrase wrong. Well, look what the cat's drug in. Yeah, he does, yeah. Ah, no, yeah. Dean, no. Why don't he just speak like a human being for once? He says, stay out of the way, punk, she's mine. And, he, and, he, and Jason, quick as a flash, says... I didn't see a ring, did I? And uh, Dean says, What are you, thick? Her brother's my sensei. <laughs> She's spoken for by me. Hi, Kel. How's my girl? What do you think you're doing? <laughs> well, well. Look at what the cat drug in. Dean Ramsey, this is Jason. Yeah, I know. We've met. We're all pals. Aren't we, Jason? How's it going, buddy? What are you guys doing? Kelly! Kelly! Come on, Kelly. Stay out of the way, punk. She's mine. I didn't see a ring, did I? Are you thick? Her brother's my sensei. She's spoken for by me. Nobody wants you here. We'll see about that. Butch, or Scott, throws a glass of punch up Jason's back. Mm. Yeah. And then flicks cake at him, which he's obviously eating. Yeah, of course he is. It's all over his face. It's all over uh, Jason's face now. And then Dean does the the schoolyard when you know pushing someone, and then Butch is kneeling down behind him and falls over the back Classic. of him. Classic. That's what you do if you're a black belt of karate. Yeah, <laughs> you get you join him in little playground games. And then slightly less school ground bullying as he throws Jason through a table. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that escalated in, quickly. In a classic November rain style. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly obviously pleads for Dean to stop. Yeah, she's gone back outside after saying, "What the fuck was? Why did you ask me to go inside? What's why?" And then she comes back out and says, "Oh my god, no!" And Jason storms off. Yeah, he's not happy about it. He actually pushes her away quite violently at this yeah, point when he, he does. Gets, yeah. He's getting back into the Griswold's vehicle. I did right. That he actually pushes her out of the way. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like that possibly did hurt her. Yeah, Kelly slaps Dean right in the face. Oof. And yeah, as you say, for some reason, Jason seems to think Kelly had something to do with that. It would have been better if Dean had blocked that. Yeah, Round the house kicked yeah, up. Yeah, I mean, he's, he threw another table that they just <laughs> set back up. They just set that table back up. <laughs> she goes straight through it as well. But uh, Jason's not happy, and he's so unhappy, he's hitting the steering wheel and having some flashbacks to scenes that you may remember happened a minute ago. Yeah, literally about 30 <laughs> seconds previously. It's the bit where he goes through the table. Remember yeah. we mentioned that? Yeah. yeah, he gets that a bit again, which they must have been pleased with the stunt, I think. Yeah, and picture this, Ken. You're Bruce Lee, right? right. You're dead. Mm-hmm. I am. You're just minding your own business. Yeah. Some kid comes over and says, I want to be just like you and gives you some flowers. You're like, all yeah. right. Then he comes back, Yeah. covered in cake and punch and... <laughs> rabbit entrails after he landed on it and is like sensei lee you have to help me he goes to his grave to mm. complain about what just happened he says sensei lee i've got no place else to go don't you see no one but you no one but you and gets all teary-eyed oh that was quite moving i guess yeah if you're a Dead. dick 
Oh. <laughs> and if you're dead, Bruce Lee doesn't give a fuck about this kid. Well, he does. That's where you're wrong. But we'll get to that. Uh, back to the house, and the dad's asking him where he's been. And Jason's like, nowhere. And he's like, I asked you where you were. And he's like, and I told you, didn't I? <sighs> and his dad pauses and says, I'll pretend I didn't hear that. And then Jason says, I should hope you would. And Jason says, <laughs> so what I will then. And Jason says, and I'll pretend I didn't say it. <laughs> so, well, there's nothing we can do about it then, is there? Yeah. See you later. And then, the, yeah, the dad again. Against... The dad's very angry about the whole thing, saying that fighting's for punks and all that, and he should never fight. He calls his dad a coward. Yeah, it says he's scared of fighting. Yeah, which uh, it riles his dad up a little bit. And he says, this is my house. And he says, my house too, dad. He says, when do you start paying rent? It gives us the classic rent line. Then it'll be your house too. And he's like, just leave me alone, is yep. what Jason shouts. Dramatic music, he runs off. The dad screams at pictures of Bruce Lee. Yeah, <laughs> and he, he starts to smash up the garage. Then, I think Jason, although he ran off, he must have just stopped after <laughs> about three steps and <laughs> then just sort of turned around and gone, oh, shit, no, my garage. Yeah, he comes back and he's almost like he hasn't been involved in this argument because he's like, yeah. hey, Dad, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, Dad, 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 we can talk. We, let, let, let's talk about it. He's like, what are you doing? He's like... What I should have done long ago. <laughs> Tear this Bruce Lee poster down. And as he does it, we get an amazing, No! <laughs> <laughs> fucking poster. I've seen less, less bothered when your bloody wife's getting killed in a film. <laughs> Tear a poster down. Like you couldn't get another Bruce like Lee could, poster in the 80s. <laughs> yeah. I'll never get one like that again. <laughs> Actually, I'll go tomorrow with RJ. You sweat stuck! What should have been done long ago. Let's go inside and talk, Dad. Please. There's no more to say. Now just get out of the way. Don't do that. No! Get out of here. Speaking of RJ, he does run to RJ's house now. Yeah, 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 he does, yeah. RJ's in a shower cap. <laughs> RJ lives behind a fence. He does. He's like Norm from Home yeah, Improvement. I, I thought that as well. He's just there, just knocking on this fence, going, RJ, 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 RJ. <laughs> <laughs> and then he he lifts his head up above this fence and looks around as to where could that be coming from? He's <laughs> like, the fucking fence, RJ. Where do you think it's coming from? He's got a shower hat on, and luckily, RJ knows of an empty house. Yeah. They can take his training stuff to. Okay, then well, let's do that right now, then. Let's yeah. not wait for tomorrow. We'll do that now, you know, before my dad smashes everything to pieces. Where's his mom at this point? That was something, you see. Where, where's where's Jason's mom? She's still struggling to get the stuff in from the car <laughs> from the big move. <laughs> you know, I'll fucking do it myself. Yeah. <laughs> She's gone back to get the next load. Yeah. <laughs> fucking 18 hours away. Yeah. Hey, uh, let's hurry up and get this set up quickly. Oh, man's going to be pissed. You go ahead, RJ. I'm going to stick around here for a while. I thought you were staying in my house tonight. Ah, uh, if I don't get home soon, my old man's not only going to be pissed, he'll call the cops. <laughs> I know what you mean. So you go on, and I'll catch you later. <laughs> Sounds good to me. <sighs> hey, RJ. Yo. Thanks. I mean, I hope you don't get into any trouble. Don't worry about me. I can handle no retreat, no surrender. They set up and uh, he thanks RJ and then they do their no retreat, no surrender handshake that they've oh. they've come up with. And uh, I actually put this romance plot seems way more plausible <laughs> than the, the Karate Kid one he's got going on with Kelly. Because that scene with the pool party is like the beach scene, isn't it? In yeah. Karate Kid, he gets beaten up yeah. on the beach. And Jason puts his ripped Bruce Lee poster back on. To some delightful music. Some really nice music, yeah. And then he has a look through some porn mags, I think, on the, on the floor there. Yeah, Bruce Lee porn mags. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wax on, wax off. That's one of them. <laughs> <laughs> he falls asleep anyway. And uh, we get uh, the karate version of A Christmas Carol now, I think. Yes, yes. Remember our action action classic? Yeah. Uh, Carl Weathers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like that, I guess. Yeah. All you hear is, Ebenezer Scrooge. <laughs> and who the fuck could this be coming through the, the, the light through of the, the door? Through the portal. I don't know. Who Who is it? I still didn't know when he actually no, walked through. Clue. Oh, look, <laughs> like, it must be his food being delivered. Yeah. <laughs> must have ordered in. Yeah, or maybe he got some dry cleaning done. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. No, but no, of course. It's 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 Bruce Lee. 
as clear, <laughs> as, clear as day. I won't tell you what you can do where for effect is if you have a character who idolizes Bruce Lee and has got posters of Bruce Lee everywhere, get a character who looks nothing like Bruce Lee but pretending to be Bruce Lee and put him right next to that poster so you can <laughs> yeah. see how little he looks like Bruce Lee. And get get your character to do a double take. Yeah, to look at the poster, then look back at him and go, nope. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you must not be Bruce Lee. Yeah, he's like, you're right, I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's dead. I just come from the up the up the road. What are you doing in my house? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the doctor from Hard to Kill. It happens every time he goes home, which was Carl Weathers, of course. <laughs> we find out in the sequel. Yeah, happens every time he goes abroad. Yeah, he's here to uh, to help him train anyway. Bruce Lee. I love how they use the ghost of Bruce Lee as the Mister Miyagi character in yeah. this film. <laughs> And uh, I have no idea what the hell Bruce Lee says for most of this now. No, no, I, he, he gives us some mystical shit, doesn't he? Yeah, he draws on the wall when, with coal or something. Yeah, he gives us a lot of mystical stuff and then just says, basically, I'm going to train you in some bullshit. Yeah, he basically says martial arts is a defence, not an attack. Yeah, he gives us all of that, all the feeling behind it. and Exactly what Miyagi says as well about, you know, you don't learn martial arts for vengeance, you learn it for pruning bonsai trees yeah i think i think that's what he said he demonstrates the basic premise of what a teacher is with the help of some water and diet coke soda yes yes which is incredible the way he did that yeah it must have been sponsored by coke it's yeah bloody everywhere isn't it in this yeah yeah and he gets he gets told some uh we have an out, outdoor montage of uh him training jason doing a bit of training and uh, just basically press ups and running and all that stuff yeah like weighted feet jogging yeah skip rope he gets he gets told um don't think, just react. He throws, throws it. Was it an apple? He throws at him or something. Yeah, I'd have caught that. I mean, that was rubbish. It wasn't even quick. Anyone could have caught that bloody thing. Yeah, he Bruce. Says, he says, "You know why you caught that? Because you didn't think. You just reacted." And that's a bit of training. And I thought, well, if he didn't catch it, fucking apple in the face. <laughs> if he'd have had no reaction whatsoever, <laughs> he just stares blankly at him with an apple. Bruce living in his head. Yeah, we get some training with the wooden man. Bruce Lee hits um, Jason in the balls with one of the arms. Yeah, quite right too. Some elevated curls on the monkey bars there from well, sit ups, I guess. But yeah, yeah. Down. That's what I used to do on the uh, at my school, <laughs> at my high school playground. He does some core training as well. Between like his head is on a bench and his feet are on a rail, and he's like up and down. I think he's just thrusting his hips, thrusting isn't he? hips. Yeah, for some core training and. I'd be fucking pissed off if RJ did this to oh, me. Yeah, he's, he, he mugs off again, doesn't he? He's like this, oh, <laughs> sneaks over like that, and then just like jumps on him. Yeah, which like when you're in the middle of training, yeah, and he just he does obviously that. Obviously, collapses to the floor, probably then, wins himself. Yeah, yeah, and just snaps RJ's neck. Yeah, well, I would have. Yeah, should have. Does some sandbag dodging, not very well at first. Obviously, we're at the beginning of the montage, for fuck's sake. Yeah, yeah, he's only just started the training, hasn't he? Admittedly, montages are usually about a minute long. This is about 20 minutes, isn't it, this well, it's montage? because we keep cutting out of the montage and then going back into the montage and uh, we get RJ, he, he sees him doing a bit of montaging, uh, can only see Jason. He cannot see the, uh, the ghost of Bruce Lee. Which he uh, incorrectly calls sensei as well. That, mm. that is Japanese. Yeah. Should we uh, Sifu, I believe. Yeah, that's true. The, is the Chinese one. But uh, yeah, he, he can't see Bruce Lee. So he gives us all the classic spinning finger around the temple, which means, are you crazy loco? And then he sneaks in the house. And even though Bruce Lee is kicking Jason and kicks him uh, through the room into RJ... RJ just thinks oh, that's normal. Yeah, he's like, what the hell are yeah. you doing? Yeah, he's just like, what kind of training would that be? Just like running backwards into it, out of a room. Yeah. <laughs> if that was his training, what would that be about? Well, Bruce Lee gives him... Um... He never tells him either. He never tells him that Bruce Lee's there. He never tells anybody. No. That's just like total secret. Never, never mentions it. Well, Bruce Lee gives him a final word of advice, and this turns him into a supreme fighter. He says, you must learn to feel every movement before it occurs. Mm -hmm. And to be ready to react. Uh, whilst this is happening, uh, boom mic. Yeah. yeah, there it is again, <laughs> just listening to Bruce very closely. And after that, one-handed push-ups. He's running a bit quicker with RJ on the bike. He does have to stop. Little improvements each time, Ken. Yeah, well, he's doing quite right too, because uh, he, he says, kick me. And uh, then he blocks the kick and shows him how to do it. Well, if somebody's got your foot. You know, if you've gone to kick him and they catch it, Bruce Lee... He just does a little backflip, kicks you on right under the chin. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one move. It's very similar to the crane kick 
in that uh, that's the one move that we will definitely get to see later on. Yeah, from Karate <laughs> so, Kid, yeah. you mean, yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's one of those where you just see it and you just think, well, that's an unusual, aha, uh-huh, yes, signature move, okay, I've got you. Yeah, yep. so they, they get a rope strapped up to the ceiling and that's how he learns <laughs> to try and do it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. A noose. I used to do that as well, yeah, I used to do that. I used to uh, just, like, break my own ankle about three <laughs> times every week that was yeah. <laughs> because that's what had happened yeah if you try and do that your ankle's just snapped in that row past you're on the floor it's too high and Ooh. when he does manage to actually do it it's actually a lot lower and then when we cut back to him it's a lot higher again yeah because you can't do it if it's that high yeah so there i'd like to see bruce lee bloody do it Never saw him actually do it in a real film or any training video. Yeah. I bet he couldn't. Yeah, but we're at the local bar anyway. The uh, dad, Papa Stilwell, he's he's a barman now. He can't pour a pint. I know that. The oh, fucking Jesus, head on it. that looks awful, doesn't oh, it? God. Although that, the head does change from scene to scene. Yeah. It does go back down to a normal drink, and then it goes back up to a, quite a big head on it, and then it's okay again. You'd be taking that back and say, can I have a full pint, please? Well, to be honest, I'll tell you what I'd do. I'd pour it over his head. Yeah, well, that's exactly what happens. <laughs> Quite right, too. It looks like Butch. If, if this guy should have been Butch the Bully's dad because he looks just like him. I think I think he wasn't that character because you know he's in it a bit more. Yeah, but uh, yeah, he could have been. He's, and he's, he's, he's a big fella, isn't he? He's a big fella sprawled over the pool table, yeah, shouting he, he wants another beer. Yeah, he's drunk, and he does. He says, "Pour, uh, clean yourself up, clear yourself up. You're a mess. That's a good boy." And pours the beer over his head, and the yeah. dad's being a little. Little pussy, because he does say, says, says, "Hey, uh, aren't you that karate guy from LA?" <laughs> I, that's what I've heard. So he's like, "Who from? <laughs> yeah. Who's saying that?" He's a bloody bloke. He's got a limp for a start. He can't walk properly. So that leg break really did him in. Yeah, and plus, like, he, he isn't going around boasting about that shit. Of course, he doesn't. He's doesn't quite even the like fighting. Yeah, he just says, "No, no, nothing like that at all." And uh, he pours the beer over his head and tries to get him to fight, and he still doesn't. And uh, then he picks up a pull cue to twat him over the back of the head. And that's where the dad draws the line. Yeah. He cannot be twatted over the head with a pull cue. That would hurt. So he uh, he just blocks it and then takes him straight out of the, straight up the back alley. <laughs> <laughs> and he says to him, he says, don't you ever come back. To which the guy clearly is drunk and doesn't understand. And he says, I'll come back. <laughs> he's like, oh, no, that's the opposite of what I've said. <laughs> no. He actually starts that sentence before the dad finishes yeah. his sentence. And I'll, I'll get you, is what he says, which uh, I think is a threat. Yeah. It's not even a veiled threat, is it? That's pretty obvious. Um, yeah. And uh, that's the end of that bit. Yeah. Meanwhile, we get back to Jason. He finally does the Oh, yeah. The, the, flip, the, kick. the flip kick. Yeah. With his, with his believe in what you can do. It's all mental. The first fight is always in the mind and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And once he does it, Bruce just fucks off. Yeah. He, no does. Goodbye yeah. Or he just leaves again, doesn't he? Just walks through the door and leaves. That was, um, that was like 15 minutes, by the way. That yeah. was. That was like the 47th minute when he finally walked through the door. And it was one hour, two minutes when he just fucked off. His, yeah. his job's done. Yeah. yeah. And that now he is. He's doing two finger press ups, which is fucking impossible. No one does them. No. One armed as well. Yeah. One arm, two finger press ups. You have a bloody laugh. So just use his breath. <laughs> Come <laughs> power style. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nobody can do those. Anyway, yeah. more and more montage, more bullshit. RJ's still there. Great yeah. music. He's doing the. Um, he's doing the same core training that you said, but now mm. RJ's just sitting on his penis. Yeah, he's riding him like a goddamn... <laughs> like a rodeo ball. Yeah, yeah with, whilst with eating his, an ice cream. Whilst eating an ice cream and listening to his Walkman cassette yeah. player. Well, Jason's thrusting his dick into his <laughs> fucking arse cheeks. <laughs> what the fuck was that? Why do they do that? <laughs> you don't get that in many montages. <laughs> Bit of bumming. No, you get close to it with Carl Weathers and Stallone in the sea. Look, but... that, that was that was because they were so happy that he'd finally won a race. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 
this is where we find out that his mum's just got back from uh, LA again with the second load of stuff and some shopping uh, because we cut now and his, his mum's taking Jason home from the shops and uh, she says, oh, I'm going to get all this uh, go in and get this ready. Oh, actually, no, because your dad's just got off work, so I better go and pick him up. Jason says, I'll go and get him, which is good. I mean, I don't know what the other scene would have been if she turned up. Because, yeah. because also, I did point out at this point, what uh, what time is it? What time is this? Five past two. <laughs> what time is this in the film? Why is he just getting off work? Because yeah. he kicked that guy out at night. At night. Yeah, and now it's like the Middle day. Middle of the day, yeah. And she's about to go in after being shopping with Jason um, to make dinner. How long's this shift? It's a fucking outrageous shift. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so he says, I'll go and get him. And when uh, when we get to the dad limping out of work, that bastard's waiting for him. And he's brought his buddies. There's four of them. And they're waiting for him to give him a beat down. He tries to talk his way out of it, the dad, because it's, it's five on one, I think. Maybe even six. I think it's four. It's four of them. Jesus. Well, one guy was really big, so I count him three times. <laughs> And uh, he doesn't know. He can't talk his way out of this one. He gets beaten up and he says, you'll never mess with me again. Oh, yeah. Uh, luckily, Jason, he turns up now and joins the fight. Yeah, he does, yeah. And I thought this would be a nice moment here for the dad and the son to beat people up together. Yeah, a little but, bit of bonding session. But the dad does not. No, he just steps back, doesn't he? Jason stands him back and then goes on a rampage. Yeah, beats them all up, checks on his dad. The dad's proud. He says, I'm very proud of you, son. I've been such a fool! <laughs> I've written that. He shouts that. <laughs> what the fuck does he That's say good. like that? The thing is, Jason. Jason takes, he you know, wastes no time whatsoever saying, see, Dad, sometimes you have to fight. Like, I was right all along, you stupid dick. He's like rubbing his dad's face in the fact that his dad just got beat up. Yeah. yeah. See, Dad, see. I was like, all right. Yeah. Bloody hell. Oh, yeah, and then he does it and he shouts that he's been such a fool at him. Yeah, <laughs> in his face. Yeah, he has anyway, no, no, no control over the sound of his own voice, the actor that plays the dad. It's very odd. Anyway, we cut to RJ's parents. Um, oh, man. <laughs> it's this, a oh, hang on, I'm going for a fucking drink before we talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Dad, are you okay? Yeah, I... Dad, there are times when you just have to fight. I'm very proud of you, son. I've been such a fool, I... I haven't exactly helped. Let's go home. I was taking dinner. She's waiting. Right, let's talk about this scene. Jesus Christ, what the bloody hell is this? So I think, like, I, as I say, I like to think of this as RJ's parents <laughs> on a date night. <laughs> yeah, we hit the nightclub, uh, which is a sorry state of affairs, isn't it? If this is the nightclub. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's some dancing. It's like Michael Jackson style dancing. Uh, they're dressed up in just red, kind of like Jackson in the Thriller video, isn't it? Yeah, but it's, it's like a, a man and a woman doing this, and uh, it's all choreographed bullshit. It's total nonsense. It's quite horrible. I think that's the name of the nightclub. Total nonsense. <laughs> total nonsense. <laughs> and uh, yeah, they're doing like, as I say, Michael Jackson. Just, yeah, like and, body popping and shit. Yeah, there's some shit with a light bulb. What oh, the yeah. fuck? I ain't got a clue. The, 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 the guy's on the floor with a light bulb in his mouth and he's doing like chest palpitations and the woman's like giving him a blowjob. The ride of his <laughs> life. And um, <laughs> she's pushing down on his chest and the bulb lights up. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how they did it. I don't care how they did it. And when just when you think this couldn't get any worse, <laughs> RJ and Jason turn up. <laughs> I've just written what I've Can I, can I yeah. read what I've written? Yeah. I just put, RJ turns up dressed like a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> pretty much. RJ turns up like um, history era Michael Jackson in yeah, the, the white drummer suit. boy fucking yeah, military the, jacket and the sunglasses oh, and the Jesus glove. Jesus Christ. Fucking hell. And he's like, he's got his head jerry curled down and stuff. And yeah, he's got his one glove on, his diamond glove. Yeah, Jesus, man. J Jason, they go in and Jason sees Kelly. Jason, of course. Jason's wearing a thin leather tie and shirt and uh, chino slacks yeah. <laughs> combo. You know, he's <laughs> very 80s. They couldn't look more like two people who would never meet or get on at all, these two. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Still, anyway, on we go. Yeah, speaking of that, Kelly's there. Yeah, guess who else is there? Kelly. 
just there, just stood there. And again, you've got such a range of ages in this fucking nightclub, all apparently well, enjoying this shit. You'll be 21 shit. to be in a nightclub. Yeah, well, I don't know how old they are supposed to be. Exactly. And Kelly's there, she's watching, she'll look that impressed. So she's, it's, this, is too, this is too urban for her, this. Mm. She's used to pool parties and like old men in a pool. He won't go and talk to her because RJ says, why don't you go speak to her? And he's like, oh, no, no, I can't. Not after what she did to me. You yeah. know, all that defending me. Even, <laughs> yeah, he even like turns away and crosses his arms like harumph kind of motion. And she also looks away when she sees him there. Yeah. yeah so that'll never work, those two. Unless there's a cunning and devious plan by RJ put into place, which involves basically getting his mum and dad to go over, do some shit. Saying, hey, do you want to dance? Uh, obviously, Jason thinks, ooh, yeah, dark meat. <laughs> so, oh, fuck. <laughs> uh, yeah. So he dives in with that dance. And uh, I think Kelly thinks the same when uh, RJ's well, dad goes well, over. Well, actually, Kelly, didn't, Kelly says no to the offer of a dance. So what the dad does is he fakes a heart attack yeah. until she says yes. He starts doing the chest palpitation dance. To be honest, I've done that before as well when a girl I remember, no. yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, so you, had to, you had me pretending to be the fucking doctor. Yeah, I actually did go to hospital as well. I, I went too long with that trick. Yeah. Yeah, that was... Uh, I was like, this man needs a dance, stat. <laughs> And yeah. they were like, did you know that? <laughs> <laughs> no, unfortunately, Lestat turns up <laughs> and drained my body of all my blood. Yeah, and I was like, fucking hell, it's Lestat. <laughs> <laughs> Great days. Great days. Listen to some past episodes if you don't understand any of that. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah, so they start dancing with the couple and then they realise it's all a ruse. Yeah. That girl isn't interested in leather tie dick fuck over here. <laughs> yeah, he's not having a heart attack looking for some uh, young middle class suburban woman. He's What's not she? after Mary White Bread or whatever the hell her name is. <laughs> and RJ goes and says, look, I know you've just started doing this DJ set, but why don't you put a really, really slow song on? <laughs> yeah, so third the song in. Yeah, so the DJ's like, yeah, fuck it. We'll close early. It just so happens I've got the shittest song I can <laughs> I can get my hands on right here. Yeah, and here it is for your entertainment. And it's a slow song, and they all have a bit of a slow dance, and they wake up and say, sorry about all that. He says, yeah, whatever. And uh, have a smooch. Anyway, we cut to the mafia, guys. Enough of that fucking horrific scene. Quite right, too. They're arriving at the airport, and either the, the main guy's bought his dad, or it's the main boss. <laughs> yeah, there's four of them now. Yeah. Yeah, Van Damme's still not there, so I don't know if he was already in Seattle. No. Because he turns up a bit later on. I'm well, sorry, Russia's I'm, really I'm, close I'm, to Seattle, I'm, isn't it? I told it? you how far away everything is. Go on. If he had flown there separately, and if he'd have gone back, in fact, to Russia, uh, that would have been... The fastest time, 17 hours. More likely, the recommended option ahead that I'm looking at here is 18 hours and 24 minutes from Moscow to Seattle. Mm. So what, has he gone back there and he makes his own way? He must do, because he hasn't been with them for a while, has he? Yeah, I don't know. That's why I didn't know where he was. Maybe he was... Anyway, still, it's unlikely. But there we go. Yeah. Um, we see posters for full contact karate. This was set up off screen, obviously. Yep. We're all right going and watching some fucking dancing, but we're not all right seeing plot development like <laughs> a contest to decide who gets the dojo. Yeah, because you got the old, the old, the old guy mafia boss. Um, he's in a lovely, a lovely hotel room, and the guy walks in. And he says, "Hi, hi there. Uh, nice curtains. <laughs> you got some beautiful, like, beautiful. Do I know you? Beautiful <laughs> curtains. He's got." And he basically says, everything is in place. He's like, what is? Why do we not know any of this? Yeah. Yeah, and um, apparently uh, the TV, all the TV stations will be live. Uh, the radio stations are all covering it. Do you know, I, I was there. I was under the impression that the Mafia were quite a secret organisation. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was going to bring this up later, <laughs> but yeah. I didn't like to do things that yeah. would draw the attention of anybody whatsoever. But they've got advertising campaigns, posters. It's like, <laughs> it's like are you really? What, just to win a dojo off yeah. some Seattle local hero? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And also, like, all the stuff that happens during this, and it's all on TV. Yeah. The, the main <laughs> Mafia guy gets in the ring. <laughs> Start <laughs> dictating what's happening. All on TV. <laughs> All live. Yeah, it's it's the code of silence that the mafia live by. Jesus <laughs> Christ. And he says, "Yeah, we won't lose. Ev we won't lose anything. Everything's under control. Seattle will be theirs." Yeah. 
For what purpose? How, how is controlling dojos worth this much hassle? I don't know, but it must be. That's the mafia for you. Yeah, anyway, big big crowd turn out for it. Also, you know those posters? Yeah. It's nice to know the mafia sent some headshots of, yeah. uh, of <laughs> Mafia Man number one <laughs> in, like, fighting pose. <laughs> well, you know, he's, he's, he paid the, uh, paid the photographer, didn't he? Might as well make most of the photos he's got. <laughs> right, Frankie Four Dicks, we need you to strip down oil up and get in fighting pose for, uh, for the poster. <laughs> yeah, it's all four of them. Come on. They're like a glove. <laughs> Good evening, sir. Thank you. Our ad will be in every paper, both morning and evening editions. Representatives from print and TV will be there, and two local radio stations will be covering it live. I hear Mr. Riley and his team are training very hard. Were there any problems? Don't worry. Everything is under control. Seattle is already yours. They will lose. Very good. Very good. Big crowd turn out for this. Yes, it is. Yes. Everyone's so, cheering. Even so though the, lo- happening. the local sports arena in Seattle. Yeah. Uh, bad guys warming up. They're in black and red pants. Ooh. One of them looks a bit like Will Ferrell. Yes. Yeah. He, he's not the most contoured, chiseled uh, <laughs> athlete, is he, this guy? <laughs> no. You got the good guys. They're in blue and black. Yeah. Butch the bully, he's uh, giving Dean a rub down before yeah. the fight. Yes, as, as he always did. Uh, Frank's there too. Yeah, and Ian. So you got Frank, Ian, and uh, Dean. They're they're the main the the main group. Yes, there's um they do a big fanfare. They do a big fanfare when they all walk into the ring. Um, a big fanfare. Yeah, everybody boos because first of all, it's the Manhattan Maulers. Boo! I love I love how not only are the mafia taking over dojos, but they've also got a New York State champion karate team. <laughs> <laughs> What the fuck? It's an elaborate front, isn't it, for legitimate business? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fucking ridiculous. Yes, but the Manhattan Maulers, they're going to have to face, <laughs> to face and get past the Seattle sidekicks. That's horrible, I isn't think it? Is that's what, that's what I've written, yeah. I, I had to listen to that twice because yeah. I was just like, what? Yeah, I had to write it down. I thought, that is shit. That's yeah. like a children's. Yeah, that's like really scary, isn't it? That sounds like the children's team sidekicks. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but everyone cheers them anyway because they really, really like them because they're locals. Yeah, on the New York team, you've got Michael Rocco. You've got John Alvarado. <laughs> and yes, shoots his pistolas <laughs> up in the air. <laughs> dressed like the three amigos. <laughs> and you've got Fazad, the headhunter. Almazon. Yeah, I could not get. I didn't write it because so. he just sort of trails away. What that is, and everyone's I replayed like, Boo! it like I replayed that like five times. I was like, I have no idea what the last name yeah. is. Each of them uh, come forwards and do a little. Yeah, some special kicks, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and everyone boos them anyway. So I don't know why. That slows bother. down the mood because he introduces all six people, yeah. doesn't he? And now we've got. Oh, it, go on. Yeah, now from Seattle. The, what does he call them? The Kingswood Kids as well, he calls them. Yeah. It's like the shittest like, nicknames ever, yeah. these guys. You've got Frank Peters. <laughs> it's like, yeah, why, he doesn't get a nickname. Why would they not call him Sugarfoot? If that was his actual nickname in real life, why not call him Sugarfoot? The Seattle Sex Offenders. <laughs> <laughs> Frank Sugar Dick Peters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then we do have... Um, Dean, shooting star <laughs> Ramsey. That's my favourite one. I actually put in capitals, Dean's nickname, shooting star. What the fuck? And finally, Ian, the whirlwind Riley. And then he comes in spinning around like a, you know, like kids do when yeah. they're really Arry-hoop, excited. Arry-hoop, arry-hoop, arry-hoop. And then falls over. <laughs> uh, we've got the rules. Three matches, three rounds, two minute rounds. Yep, that's about it. But yep. wait. But, he literally gets knocked off his yeah, fucking... But, but wait, get the fuck out of the ring, you <laughs> idiot. Here comes the Mafia, just to uh, to lay low, keep a low profile, and take over the entire proceedings live on television. And make a whole mockery of whatever the, the people paid for. Yeah, and uh, whatever we've just seen, uh, he says there's been a change of the roster, seeing as we have no serious competition from Seattle. And everyone's like, boo! And Dean's like, grrr, I'm a shooting star. And it, he throws glitter. <laughs> <laughs> we only need one person to beat absolutely everybody up in the world. And it's Ivan Krasinski. 
I think his nickname is the Russian. Isn't yeah, it? the Russian. Really, really poor nickname yeah. for a Russian. But anyway, he's, yeah. he's flanked by guys when he comes out with his arm. But they've all got white t-shirts on and they're arm raised. And those guys who walk him to the ring in the very next shot are in the crowd booing him in different <laughs> outfits. <laughs> you can clearly see them all. Still, what I want to know is what happened to Michael Rocco and John Alvarado, who we never saw before and never see again. They're just standing by the side of the ring cheering. Yeah, but what, you know, what, they've, they've been brought here from New York. Yeah. I've told you, it's a six hour fucking flight. Yeah. For what? Nothing. Yeah. I mean, nothing. I mean, <laughs> nothing. Tra la la. I mean, obviously you've got uh, Fazad, the headhunter. He'd been in it earlier, but the other two, they must have been flown over especially for this to not take part. Yeah, we didn't even get a, a scene of let's see how badass these two are. Yeah, they just did a little bit of it. <laughs> Admittedly, one looks like Will Ferrell, but <laughs> yeah, looks out of breath as soon as he finishes <laughs> his three kicks. Yeah, but anyway, enough of that because it is. It's Van Damme. He's going to beat everybody up. So fuck yeah. Yeah, Jason, he turns up to watch and instantly recognises Van Damme, which is odd because his dad doesn't. He's no, just he's looking round. No, he's, he's got a limp. Yeah, we get a flashback of him getting beaten off, the dad. He, um, Jason runs. He's, he's there with RJ and his dad. His mum's obviously gone back for the third load of stuff from <laughs> Seattle. It would take about three months to get this load done. His mum's covering his dad's shift at the bar because he's too scared <laughs> to go back there. Yeah, he's... Um, he goes and tells them, and just warns them about this uh, Russian customer. And they say, hey, don't be crazy, man. It's, we're, we're great. We're going to win. Don't be stupid. And everyone goes, ha, ha, ha. Well, Ian says, who the fuck is this douchebag? Yeah. Hey, who are you, douchebag? <laughs> Who's this schmuck? And the kid, he's like, I'm Jason. I'm a friend of Kelly's. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, hey, don't worry, kid. We can take him. He's like, no, I've seen his this guy fight. He fights dirty. And then Dean's like, and you're seeing us fight too, ha, 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 ha. Yeah, and everyone goes, get out of here. Yeah, Ian's like, just sit back and enjoy yourself. And then uh, Jason's like, okay, then goodbye. <laughs> Thank you for your time. <laughs> yeah, and off he goes, just sit back down and go, ah, fuck it. Then. It's the shooting star. He's flying high and he's up first against JCVD. Let the destruction begin. Come in the ring, please. You can do it. On your mouth, babe. Gentlemen, just obey my commands. When I ask you to break, I want you to break clean and fast. In the event of a knockdown, I want you to go immediately to a neutral corner and stay there until I tell you to come out. Do you understand? I love the ref. He looks like Fred from Scooby Doo. <laughs> <laughs> he does actually. Yeah, yeah. he's quite tall, though, isn't he's he? Fucking he, tall. He is quite a tall guy. A bit of a Ric Flair haircut going on there. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, Dean, the shooting star himself, he offers quite a lot of offense and lands none. Yeah, does he? He, he just he just dodges all of them. Van Damme's just like dancing around the ring and moving out of the way. Van Damme looks like th- these uh, fight scenes at the end are the best things in the film. Yeah. And they're way too good to be in this film, these fight scenes. <laughs> it's taken a long time to get yeah. to it. Yeah. I wouldn't say these are like unbelievable fight scenes, but they're definitely better than this film. Yeah. And uh, it's all down to Van Damme. Everything lands and looks believable, probably because he's probably yeah. actually <laughs> landing them. <laughs> he's actually hurting. I mean, everyone. he was an actual real life kickboxing badass, wasn't he, Van Damme? Was yeah. Was it kickboxing he was yeah, doing? He, uh, yeah, and blood sporting. <laughs> He's doing them all. Cyborging, <laughs> universal soldiering, and universal soldering. Yeah. He got a, <laughs> went to college for Yeah, he also did a little bit of that. And he basically just beats him up, just does a couple of does the spinning back kick when he finally bothers to launch any offense himself <laughs> he's just moving dodging everything and then he's like ah, go on then. then he actually has the audacity to drop kick somebody in the middle of a, a kickboxing match he just drop kicks him straight through the ropes and dean is out of there ko'd yeah <laughs> he goes back to his corner van damme to do the boingy boingy oh that's perfect though isn't it he that? does that he, yeah isn't that beautiful the way he does that yeah he just just does the splits and the ropes in the corner, just, just, oh, and yeah. then how he gets out of it is he roll. I've yeah. never actually seen him get out of oh, it. Yeah, you always see him in forwards roll. You always see him in that pose, don't you, in yeah. films? And that's um, yeah, he um, crosses his arms as well. Yeah, it's, quite, then, it's quite an iconic uh, image. Image, of it. Yeah. yeah. And then he rolls out to get out of it. Yeah. Gentlemen, you know all the rules, so just obey my commands. 
and let's have a good, clean fight. Are you ready? Yeah. Ready? Fight! Frank's up next. Um, the Sugarfoot. We get an awesome round the house kick to finish him off. Oh, yes. Um, interestingly to know, uh, they shot that more than once. How many times do you reckon Jean Claude Van Damme knocked the actor that played Frank out? <laughs> really? Yeah. So it's at least one. Or uh, maybe it's not. I'm just. Uh, okay, then I'm going to say E twice. Correct. He actually did. He knocked. Is it, What's his name? Cartwright. What's his name? Uh, Peter. Peter Cartwright. Is it Cartwright? The Sugarfoot. Knocked him out twice doing that. Um, the first time he did it, he broke character and was like, are you okay? And uh, the director bollocked him. <laughs> <laughs> He's Hong Kong, isn't he? So yeah, twice he knocked him out during uh, doing that kick. And when you actually watch it in the film, it's a fucking devastating kick. Yeah. It, pro- it looks real. <laughs> like it's, It looks a really good finish. Wow. Anyway, the Mafia guy, for no reason whatsoever, other than it's a movie, makes the next fight winner take all. Yeah. Even though they've already won. Yeah, 2 1. Yeah. 2 1 to New York. No, 2 0. Well, two, 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 2 0, New York. So we've got Ian versus Van Damme, which doesn't sound overly appealing. It is. It's not called Van Damme in the film, though, is he? <laughs> Ian <Ivan>. versus Ivan. <laughs> <laughs> Good, clean fight. You heard this before, yes? You need? Then we fight. Uh, lightning quick strikes in this one to start us off. To be honest, this is this is quite a good fight. Yeah. I quite like this one because it's the first time that anybody actually lands anything on Van Damme properly, isn't it? Yeah, and the first one to go into the second round. Yeah, so they do get round two. So um, there's um, many many spin kicks as well. There's lots of lots of. Um, it's just like proper stuff, isn't it? This yeah, it's yeah. Like just proper fight in this one. Which That's is, what I mean. This has no good. right to be in this film. No. We were expecting like Karate Kid, where it's like one guy who looks like he knows what he's doing, everyone else is an actor. <laughs> but no, like this fight, especially, it's pretty, it's very quick, like the strikes and stuff are yeah. fucking lightning fast. I mean, he still does look a little bit out of control, Ian the Whirlwind Riley. Yeah. He's still, like, some of those punches he throws are like from, like, down by his waist. He's just, like, swinging a straight arm. Yeah. But. Some yeah. great scenes from Van Damme as he pushes the ref out of the way because uh, Ian hits him, doesn't he? Yeah. Clocks him one. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, he gets angry after that. And he? pushes him over the edge. He pushes the ref, starts choking him with like the strap from the padding <laughs> of the... <laughs> All on live TV, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Yeah, he just like takes the wrapping off the, uh, the, the term buckle rope and yeah, wraps it around his neck. And uh... <laughs> I laughed out loud at this next bit. Uh, I did as well, yeah. He, he kicks the ref over the ropes, by the way. <laughs> That's what I laughed Oh, at. is it? <laughs> yeah. oh, sorry, then. The ref, old Fred from Scooby-Doo, <laughs> comes to try and break it up, and he roundhouse <laughs> kicks him, and you just see him flying over the fucking <laughs> rope. You see his legs. <laughs> oh, this bit made me laugh out loud, is when Scott gets involved. Oh, bites his leg. Bites his ankle, bites Van Damme's ankle <laughs> while he's strangling uh, Ian. <laughs> and he just... He just like he's on the floor. He just headbutts Scott in the face. You, you know, in um, <laughs> like a back headbutt. Yeah, you know, in like Universal Soldier, when he just bends over at that unflattering <laughs> angle, it's almost like you see the foot and Scott biting it, and then Van Damme's head just appears, <laughs> and just fucking drops just, a nut just on him. Headbutts him. It just really made me that laugh. Made me Scott's laugh. just like. Bleh! And I had my note is this is all on live TV, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then he, he ties him up in the ropes, doesn't he? Which you mentioned the wrestling, if people know what that is. Yeah, it happens quite a lot in there, isn't it? When you're the heels. Yeah, it ties him up in the ropes. And Heel just... means bad guys if you don't know what wrestling <laughs> is. Yeah, and then he's just punching him repeatedly, <laughs> stomach, face, everywhere. Yeah, he's like tied up at his waist, isn't he? And offering no, <laughs> you know, his hand, his arms are free, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, they are. He's yeah. just offering no defense and he's just pummeling him. And then his sister grabs the uh, the yeah, stool. Yeah, she grabs a stool from the corner, yeah. She goes to attack Van Damme and he grabs her hair, blocks the chair, grabs her hair. Yeah, and only now, <laughs> only at this point, <laughs> does anybody think, hang on a minute. <laughs> <laughs> that's what i've written the ref's been yeah. fucking probably killed <laughs> yeah as anybody now thinking wait this isn't right ian's being choked to death <laughs> and hung up in the road the ref's dead the ref's dead <laughs> scott's had his nose bone smashed into his own brain <laughs> yeah 
<laughs> as has Frank. Sugar Foot's really been knocked out twice. <laughs> and all of a sudden, Jason's just like, oh, I better do something about this. And he's up and at him and flying kick over the ropes. Yep. And uh, it, again, it's a good entrance into the ring. <laughs> Ken's favourite lines. Yeah, we, we give uh, quite a few spin kicks, actually, at this point mm. as well, which uh, like like moves Ivan back a little bit. And he's just like, huh? And then he looks at him, and this, this is like, there's two lines in films that end with the same sort of noise, and this is one of them. The other one's King of the Kickboxers, but we'll do that separately. If you've heard the trailer, you've, yeah. heard, the, you've heard that one. <laughs> this one is uh, Van Damme saying, so, it is you, the sun, is it not? And he says, this time it's going to be different, Russian. And Van Damme replies with, Wah! <laughs> and runs at him and it's brilliant I fucking love that honestly it's great I love anything where it ends with somebody just doing that noise yeah <laughs> the thing is though Jason's a bit of a dick isn't he as well in this bit yeah he's very cocky isn't yeah, he yeah he does all the Bruce Lee stance and all that and Van Damme even says to him he says uh, you're good and he says I get better and he's like oh, fuck off <laughs> yeah <laughs> you you're cocky shit. cocky bastard you don't act like you weren't just there watching your friend dance like Michael <laughs> Jackson around the fucking place <laughs> anyway we get a flashback to Bruce Lee giving advice remember that from 10 minutes ago yeah that's right yeah that happened earlier in this film it's advice about being quick and direct and they end up fighting Van Damme rips his shirt off takes his gloves off he's quite not doing right, any of this quite shit quite right too he dodges him thanks to his sandbag, his sandbag training. <laughs> Every single time you see a flashback, you know it's about to come in useful. Yeah. Every, he had no wasted training. Everything he did was to lead up to this fight. Except for the uh, one-armed, two-finger press-up, which is useless to everybody. Yeah. RJ reminds us of the title of the film. <laughs> That's after uh, he gets a turnbuckle pad to the face because he rips the turnbuckle off now, Ivan. The actual padding. Throws it in um, Jason's face, you know, to to save him from uh, any sort of embarrassment. Then he ties him up in the ropes. Then he gives him three forearms to the face, which would probably <laughs> knock you clean out as it's well. The first one, yeah. And uh, then RJ shouts out something. I don't know if you've heard it or you're aware of this phrase. Jason, no retreat, no surrender. That's a bit of a Brian Blessed <laughs> touch to it at the end there. <laughs> Dive! <laughs> and then we get more intercuts with the training flashbacks whilst he's doing it, which is annoying. Yeah, I know, yeah. It should have just been... Because that's, that's enough to rouse Jason. Yeah, when he thinks, oh, shit, yes, this film. Yeah. And he obviously give, he does the flip kick. Yeah. It stuns the Russian against the ropes. And then a last round the house kick. Gets yep. him out the ring. He's out of there. That actually hurt Van Damme in real life. Him landing on his back outside the ring. I'm not surprised. Yeah, because it's looking fucking painful. <laughs> and uh, that's enough for Dad, RJ and Kelly to start chanting his name. The crowd goes wild. The mafia get up and leave. Quick smart. Before they have to just open fire on everybody and just kill them. <laughs> I imagine all. that one guy is probably going to be killed for betting everything on the last <laughs> fucking... Although, did he actually... He lost, didn't he, I guess? Or did, was there just no contest? I don't know. The Russian, you Not see sure him. They play by the rules, to be honest. The mafia. He tries to uh, to get up. He's KO'd on the floor. He just hits the ground. That's the end of the the Russian. I think the ref actually counts him out as he well. <laughs> he's, he's just, yeah, and he's like, "You're out." He's like, yeah, so, "So are you?" Yeah. Uh, the crowd rush the ring. Uh, lift Jason up over their heads. You've even got Dean and Butch. They're lifting him up. Yeah, there's a there's a song starts up. Yeah, get, kick ass eighties rock yeah. song. Uh, and that plays us to black. And it, it goes on too long, actually, this bit, where, yeah. where they're all like leaping at him above their heads because yeah. they drop him twice, yeah. if you watch, because they don't stop the footage. <laughs> they yeah. just like there, and twice he actually lands back on the floor and then they lift him back up again. And with that great scene that Ken's just described, <laughs> it fades to black <laughs> and the end of the film. Nobody told you that you faced the truth. Yourself wonder, let your spirit find the way. Reach for the power from within. Beautiful. What did you think? As good as you remember? Oh, it's funny. 
It is, yeah. It's just, it's more full of what the fucking hell's this all about moments than I remember. I remember it just being a good film about like fighting and montages. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot all the dancing shit and RJ being a total twat of a human. The totally useless character of Kelly. It could might as well, it might as well not have been in it. Yeah. It was just to give us a little bit more conflict, wasn't it, within the characterization? It's yeah, literally just oh, that was in Karate Kid. Let's add that bit. Yeah, yeah. but uh, I, I really enjoyed it. I, I thought it was fun. It was. It was just one of those where you just think, "What a bloody film that is!" <laughs> it's a mess, yeah, but still, well done. Uh, Van Damme's second uh, film role. What was his first one? Monaco Fever. <laughs> <laughs> I got Monaco fever. <laughs> Is that what he was doing? He's doing it? the dance from that bar scene. <laughs> <laughs> Just doing high kicks. Yeah. I got Monaco fever. <laughs> really? Oh, wow. He, he played a Russian in Black Eagle as well, didn't he, Van Damme? Such was his uh, incredible accent that they thought we better get him back for another one <laughs> yeah. against Shokasugi of all the ninja film fame. Yeah. Where, where's this rank for you with Van Damme's films, Ken? It's not very high up, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> he's not in it enough, is he? No. He's brought in as a threat at the beginning, does a little bit of that. He's brought in again at the end. One of the rare times he's a, a villain as well, isn't it? Yeah, and it was a and Jean-Claude Van Damme as in the credits. So he's not even the main star in this. He wasn't credited until the end. Yeah, so we're, we're, but obviously we've now... We've spoke about all that before, haven't we? Where it's like, and somebody as somebody. And you just think, who the hell are they? Yeah, but obviously I... now, any promotional thing you see for this film oh, yeah, is yeah, these, exactly, the yeah. splits in the corner of Van Damme, isn't it? That's how it, it draws you. Like, if you go on um, Amazon, it's Van Damme, the picture. He's, he's on all the front covers. Yeah. The, the front cover of the VHS I had, uh, it was... The RJ same... dancing. <laughs> no, it was him. It was Van Damme, but it was a drawing of Van Damme. <laughs> yeah, because a... it wasn't even a photograph. It was a drawing of the photograph of Van Damme. Did you get this from a market? <laughs> it was a gold video VHS mm. box. Yeah, I don't know what the company was. Obviously, they're long gone now. But yeah, it was a golden uh, box release, and it was a drawing of him. And I always used to it used to annoy me that his hair wasn't perfect was slicked back but because it was a photograph they've copied it identically and his hair wasn't perfect because he like it was during a fight mm. so it had already been knocked out a little bit but yeah it always annoyed me that and i was thinking yeah but it's a drawing why don't you just draw it properly draw it as it should have been but no they didn't just annoy the fuck out of me now <laughs> <laughs> and a little insight there into ken's mind <laughs> yeah that was all that annoyed me you know um What's his What's his name? Kurt McKinney, mm -hmm. uh, who played Jason. He also went on to star with uh, one of my huge favourites, Cynthia Rothrock, in Sworn to Justice. And of course, Cynthia Rothrock was in the sequel to this film. Yes, again, directed by Corey Ewan. No Retreat, No Surrender 2, which we will cover on this podcast. I think we should, because it's so well connected to this film. It's <laughs> unbelievable. <Yeah. laughs> Uh, just going back to Sworn to Justice, uh, Cynthia Rothrock has two sex scenes in that. Very, very nice. <laughs> it's important that you brought that into the podcast, Ken. Thank you. It's very important to my life, okay? Anyway, well, go on then. Film pitch. Wait a second. Let's get a drink. It's alive. It's alive. It's alive. Okay, so the film pitch. Go. What I'm thinking is, remember Dodgeball? I do indeed, yes. Well, forget it. It's okay. got nothing to do with that. Okay, I'll cross that back out. No, it's like dodgeball. It's a dojo. Okay, I've written it again. Falls afoul of creditors and is going to be closed. Shit. The only way they're ever going to keep the place open is to take part in an interstate karate tournament. Mm -hmm. They're basically, with a, with a mixture of lads that they've got there and also trying to re recruit others from the, the town, they've got to try and get a, a ragtag team together to win the tournament and the grand prize. Okay. What do you think to that film? Would you watch it? Yeah. Anything happen? What we got? Who's in it? So I'm 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 thinking I'm thinking Scott needs to be the main man. Do you know what I was thinking? Is one is one a good dojo? One's a bad dojo. Yeah, you got the the the, the favourites are the the cocky bad dojo. Yeah. Is that what they're called? Co cocky bad. Cocky dojo. Cocky dojo. Yeah. Uh, who have you got in them? Scott Scott's a goody or a baddie? Goody. Okay. So the bad guy, Michael J. White. Yeah. Let's bring them back together. 
yeah. these two. Incredible. And Undisputed 2 was great. So let's bring them back together. I think they'd like to make another film together. Yeah. What's Scott Stojo called? It's called um, Wow, What a Dojo. Wow, What a Dojo. So yeah, you got you got um Michael J. White. Yep. He plays Kinky Suicide. <laughs> it's good to hear about that again. Uh you've got Scott Adkins. He yep. he plays Cameron Coolcock. <laughs> nice. Cameron Coolcock. Yep. Obviously hyphenated last name. Got it. I'll add the hyphen. Yep. And then um obviously Michael J. White's got uh what about Chuck Liddell? Can he be one of them? Yeah. A what? bad guy or a good guy? He's a bad guy, isn't yeah. he? Look at him. Yeah. He's <laughs> a bloody ice man. Yeah. Go on then. Rampage Jackson. Yeah, Rampage Jackson. What about Randy Couture? Are these all the, the bad guys? Yeah. Okay. It's a pretty decent team, isn't he, that Michael J. White's got? So what's that, four of them? That's four, that's, including, that's enough, including MJ. Yeah, that's enough. So let's come up with some names for him. So Rampage Jackson is going to be called Mental... Fits. <laughs> yeah, with a Z, Fits, yeah. 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 Who else we got? Chuck. Chuck Liddell is going to be called Tommy, the snowman, man, double N. <laughs> Why? Because <laughs> I thought the ice man. Because he does cocaine? No. Okay. He just likes snowman. <laughs> He's got a pendant. <laughs> He actually tell you what he has. He always he, he has um he, he, wears, he wears a top hat and a, has a corn cob pipe. <laughs> Randy Couture, he's called Barry Burger Faced Bouvier. He's <laughs> in. He's in. Triple B. <laughs> is Burger Face is that like a nickname or is that just his actual name? It's, it's his nickname. In French as well is Bouvier. Yeah. Yeah. Sacré bleu. After a fucking beret, beret, yeah, a burger, Some garlic around his neck, <laughs> and then obviously we need Scott Adkins' team. So Cameron Coolcock, what's his? Who, who we got for him? Mm. No one, nobody, yeah, no. Oh fuck. Okay, we're gonna need some grizzled vet that comes back in that's like around the town doesn't want to join the team, but sees injustice and knows he has to join them. Who's that man, Ken? I don't know. It's difficult, isn't it? Chuck. A bit too old, isn't he? 80 fucking two. Dolph. <laughs> 82. Van Damme. Van Damme. Nice. Okay. We can get Van Damme. Yeah, he's in. He did say he's doing his last action film, though. It's already underway. He'll want to do this. I think he probably will. So, John claude Van Damme is playing... Jack the Comet. Once every four years. Jack-like French for Jack. 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 <laughs> The gl- La Grande Fromage Boucherie. <laughs> you I think you've overdosed on the French aspect of this. <laughs> what about Jack Laurent? Jack the Big Cheese Butchers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jack Laurent. Just Laurent. Yeah. Jack the Orange. <laughs> Yes, that's Van Damme. Is that his nickname or is that his actual surname? That's his surname. Okay, he hasn't got a nickname. He's in. Is he fighting them all? No. Like like in this film? No, he's the reluctant, okay, I'll help you out, but I don't want to. Okay. But I've seen the injustice that's happening in the streets of our small town of... Is this his entire speech? Yes. Is this his dialogue? I have seen. (laughs) I cannot take this anymore. Boingy, boingy, boingy. (laughs) And then also... Okie dokie. Also... JCVD again with hair slick back. <laughs> As his twin brother. As his twin brother. The evil one. He plays What is he's in the good guy team. Yeah, I know, but he's like he's like the renegade. He's okay. the he's got a criminal record, the other one. Oh right, okay. He plays Mon Dieu. <laughs> <laughs> That's his only name we get, yeah? Yeah. Okay. He's just called Mon Dieu. <laughs> he's in. So you got two JCVDs and Scott Adkins, and then we need one more. He said he wasn't going to make another action film, but he's making two. <laughs> <laughs> We've got him twice. 
Jackie Chan. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. That's the stupid bit, yeah. That's silly now. <laughs> what about a woman instead? Okay, let's have a woman. The real one. Um, who's, I'll tell you who's doing a load of shit films. Ruby Rose. Who the fuck's that? She's done some films and shit. She's a fighter. She does fight in films. Okay, then, Ruby Rose. She's got a shaved head. That's her look. Okay, then. She's in a film called The Doorman with uh, uh, Jean Reno. Perfect, then. She obviously sounds like she's well up for this. Ruby Rose. She's got a shaved head. That's her, that's her thing. Is that a real name? I thought, well, it's a name that I know. <laughs> <That's>, okay. <laughs> I don't know if it's a real name. I've it's a name it. that I know of. It might not be her name. <laughs> yeah, she exists. Yeah. Yeah, Ruby Rose. Okay. Check her out. She was in uh, Vanquish with Morgan Freechild. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, where she's also playing a, an assassin or, like, a hard case. Yeah. They're worth a look, you know. She's she's not she's not top-level action draw. Not quite yet. Oh, brilliant. So perfect. We call her at the perfect <laughs> time in her career. Exactly, yeah. She's building. Yeah. Well, everyone else, I don't know if you've noticed, <laughs> like, that you've got, apart from Michael J. White and Scott... Uh, not exactly the peak of physical fitness themselves. Well, we, we can't we can't be hiring peak of physical fitness actors at the minute. Exactly. Unless so we'll, we go with no names, but that's not fun. We'll go with Ruby Rose. Okay. You got a name for her? Uh, no. <laughs> Claire Galahad. What about traditional? <laughs> traditional Galahad. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's her name. <laughs> Does she wear like a suit of armor? No. She has got the tattoo of armor on her arm, though. <laughs> like, it looks like a. she's well, wearing a, like, uh, not a suit of armor, except it's tattooed on her arm. Okay. Well, she's in traditional Galahad. Yep, and then it's it's basically just training them up. Uh, traditional Galahad, you know, they don't want to accept her because she's a woman initially, of course. Yeah. I mean, other team members are one man. Pretending to, be, <laughs> pretending to be two. So. Yeah, exactly. The only reason you can tell the difference is he's slicked his hair back. <laughs> he's got a different haircut. Yeah, that's true, isn't it? It's, uh, it's Scott Atkins, Van Damme, and Ruby Rose, who we don't even know is a real person. <laughs> she bloody is. Look her up, I'm telling you. And then we've got... And you've got Michael L. J. White, Rampage Jackson, Chuck the Iceman leader, Randy Couture. <laughs> yeah. So just run through me very quickly before we just uh, end this. Um, names? Um, we've got the owners are the owner of Cocky Dojo is Kinky Suicide. The owner of Wow What, what a Dojo is Cameron Coolcock. Yeah. On the Cocky Dojo side, <laughs> alongside Kinky Suicide, we have Mental Fits. We have Tommy the Snowman Man, <laughs> and we have Barry Burger Face Bouvier. <laughs> Three hardcore veterans of the underground fighting circuit. Yep, sounds like quite a quite a team. It's a, it's a tough team to beat, but if anyone can do it, it's Cameron Coolcock fighting out of the Wow Water Dojo team with Jacques Larange, Monte, <laughs> and, and traditional Galahad. <laughs> Which, which I think's quite fearsome in itself. <laughs> and um, <laughs> alive. It's alive. It's alive. They lose. Uh, wow, what a dojo! Oh, okay. Well, um, that's a sad ending. They go to the judges. Yeah. For the thumbs up, thumbs down thing like they're doing dodgeball. Okay. Last one, Carl Weathers. Oh, yes. In full police uniform. Yeah, and sheriff. Yeah. Gives a thumbs down and they lose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's a bad guy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I'm looking forward to the sequel where he comes back, apologizes, realizes he's done wrong after several deaths have occurred after this fight. Why, why would they go to a thumbs up, thumbs down in a karate tournament? <laughs> Doesn't make sense, does it? Because <laughs> everyone's dead. Oh, yeah, of course. Everyone's beaten each other to death. So what else can they go to? 
Carl Weathers, <laughs> exactly. Who I go to. going to turn to in times of murder? Yeah, Carl you, Weathers you, is the man. You've got well, he's the police chief after all. Yep. I wouldn't know who won if everyone was dead. I turn up at a death scene. You'd be like, oh, I don't know what's going on here. You get Carl Weathers walking in, telling you what's happened. You're like, fair dues. What would you call this film if you had to call it something? Uh, well, I think we do have to call it something, can't we? You can't just release a film without a title. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that doesn't happen. <laughs> wow, what a dojo. Nah. Kinky suicide? Not this time. <laughs> what about half past kickboxing? A quarter to death match. Quarter to death. <laughs> like it. That's the name of it. <laughs> yeah. When Scott Adkins meets Michael J. White, it's a quarter to death. <laughs> Mon Dieu! <laughs> Speaking of Monjo, that's all the time we've got for this week. Uh, I'm going to bring this episode to a close. Thank goodness. Thank you, as always, to my co-host, Mr. Kenby Wilde. Thank you very much. Uh, what did you think of this week's episode? Where's it rank amongst Van Damme's best action films? It's up there, surely. We want to know. We want you to tell us what you think of this film. Do you have memories of it as a child? Were you like Ken, sad, pathetic, with a <laughs> shitty little penis just in the in his garage, <laughs> kicking a fucking ball against the wall like some kind of loser? <laughs> if that was you, email us in, badmoviecult at gmail.com. I will. <laughs> <laughs> you can also find us on Twitter, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram. If you want to discuss this week's episode with other cult members, you can. Just search for Bad Movie Cult Discussion Group on Facebook. All links available in the show notes. If you'd like to support the podcast, you can by simply leaving us an Apple Podcast rating or review. You can do the same on Spotify. It's a massive help getting us found by new listeners. Why did you mention my little penis in that bit? You can find all previous episodes as well as written reviews of films not covered on the podcast on our website. That's www.badmoviecult.com. Join us again in two weeks' time when we'll be back. Me... Ken and his shitty little penis <laughs> with another movie review deep dive and film pitch. I'm rather attached to it. <laughs> <laughs> right here on the Bad Movie Cult podcast. Mon Dieu! Chupra! Do you like Jason Spunk, Ken? I do, yes. I like that spunk.